I should probably. Yeah, I don't see Discord streaming. Uh, well, no, no, not yeah, not Discord. Uh, we are live with training mode. We are. Yeah. Okay. I can see Robo... Ragnar the Bloody and Jin Kasagi. Can you can you hear my Indeed. sick low fi beats? Can you? Can uh, you I can't because I have the stream muted to avoid oh. hearing myself. Hold on, let me turn it on. Yeah, I can hear them. Yeah, right. I can. All right, sweet. We're sorted ish. Um. Uh, and this is like, this will just be... Let me ping uh, people, by the uh, way. Uh, yeah, yeah, G give a ping. We'll, we'll wait a couple minutes just to let people show up. Um, I'm assuming <laughs> that this is this is just going to do the thing where it's like normally recorded or like automatically saved, right? Like, uh, it should be automatically saved. The, yeah, all yeah, of them yeah. are. Yeah, the uh, ones, right. Rather than, yeah, the, yeah. This should be, this should be saved automatically. Okay, so You can always turn on local recording as well if you want to be doubly <sighs> sure. You don't uh, want to store that much data. Uh, uh, shrug. Um, let's turn this music down a touch, I think, just for my sake. He says, turning it up. <laughs> uh, Alright, there we go. Uh, there. Alright, I'm going to get the nine dust loop up as well. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, there are it's going to be questions curious. I am not ready for. Wait, didn't I, I, I think I filled in the on ODR column for nine a while back. Uh, the 5A... It's, no, no, it's not. It's no. not in mind. I'm, I must have... It must have been a different character. I, They're they're incomplete because it's not one of the main columns, so no one noticed it. <laughs> it should have been. Now it, now it is. Uh, hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug my seminar in a few other places real quick. I need everyone to see this. This oh. is important. Mm -hmm. All right. Also, you might want to... Uh, set up an extra scene to look at you like a browser tab of dust loop just so you can show people what you're looking at oh this it's not that important fascinating but... well let me just close that uh let me just bump this stream quality down a bit um okay so an extra one sec no worries uh so I could just like do this right and then it shows no war I don't get it uh oh so I could just turn off turn on monitor which has nothing currently sorry I had to be right back uh no you're fine you I'm, I'm, doing... I'm just talking to myself it's all right um hello people who are potentially already here and waiting to listen to how we beat nine uh I am just it's gonna impossible. give it a... Give yeah, up. yeah, give up. Bye. Uh, uh, no. Um. So I'm currently doing some uh, doohickeying around, trying to make things look nice and talking to myself. We will be starting shortly. Uh, I'm just wanting to ensure that everything is in order. <laughs> Hi, long time listener, first time call. <laughs> this is we really are the Blaze Blue podcast now. Oh hell yeah. Um. I'm just looking at OBS, so if I just turn... Well, write down questions in chat, by the way, since we're, course, I think probably we're getting them to the... getting to them at the end, right? Uh, yes. Um, I'm happy to, like, if, if questions are there as they, like, as I'm going, if someone asks a question that's, like, relevant, um, I or anyone else who notice it, feel free to jump on it, but I'll, like, save, like, the more... I'll try not inter... I'll, yeah. I, look, don't stop reading chat until we get to the actual <laughs> bit. I will look at chat and write down all the questions for you. Okay, all right, six. So, if I just and I will it... also write down the Discord ones that you have thumbs up. I think you yes. probably have. Them I, I, I I have thumbs thumbs up to them. Okay, um... I'll just write this in the same document then. Okay, alrighty. Um, we're five past seven. Uh, I'm assuming we're probably more or less good to start. Uh, why was why was that held for auto mod? Profes the professional streamer's statement was uh. Held for auto mod. No, the the, the mod detected sarcasm. <laughs> My God. Uh, <laughs> um. Hopefully, sound levels are at least okay. Uh. I don't need them to be perfect. I just need myself to be audible. Um. So what are we, what are we learning in class today? Um. Hold on. I I, I can be real 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 corny. Hold on. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh. So. All right. Uh. Boom. Hold on, wait, wait, hold on. Alright, everyone just be quiet for like three seconds. I really want! Okay, so that, that's that's so people looking at the audio can 
let's see where it is. I don't think Robo's ever going to look at the audio for this in terms of cutting it. They're probably just going to export it immediately. However, loud noises so we can see on the like the the audio curve thing where it gets big. Anyway, hello. All right. Um, and then I just kept talking, so we're gonna have to cut that out too. Hello, Nine the Phantom. We're learning to beat Nine the Phantom today. Um, here's the plan. Uh, the vague outline is I'm going to start. Ultra basic, right? This is this this is going to aim to be comprehensive. We are going to start ultra basic, but I will be skimming over the basics in favor for the juicier info, just because I feel like learning the basics about nine, you could do that elsewhere, right? I will start mm -hmm. four hour unscripted. No, I think we've got a hard limit of two hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> also for my sanity, two hours, please. Um, I, I'd like it to be less than that if we can, though. Um, but yeah, uh, the plan is little bit of basics, but then we'll get into the meat and bones later. I will be covering individual setups, and then we'll have questions at the end. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just pick Ragnar, right? Uh, let's also Ragnar's pick... Ragnar's probably a good lesser. choice. Yeah, he's he's quite average when it comes to 9, thankfully. You, right. you could talk about, like, uh, whether they oh, have no. a DP available or not, because... Uh, yeah, because DP let's... available definitely is uh, an important factor. Yeah. So we'll just... And Ragnar's DP is above average as well. We'll just talk about, like, Nine's literal basics, right? So, buttons. Uh, all of her A buttons are water, right? Um, oh my god. Crazy, I know. Please drop combos and set up while explaining things unscripted from the top of your head. No, we're not doing that. Um, this is... I just want to actually... Okay, quick disclaimer before I really rip into things. This is not aiming to be a literal unscripted guide. This is... This is going to be recorded, sure. But the, the, the idea behind this is not going to be, please go here to learn everything, and it's just like some mishmash mess. This is a chance for specifically Australia and anyone else watching to ask questions. Um, then after this video, the plan is I'm going to take a lot of the stuff that was discussed, stuff that I think that was important that was brought up, and I'll make a separate video on the side. Um, I just, I, fun fact, when you speak for 30 seconds in a row while Spotify is playing, it thinks you're trying to stream Spotify to other people, and it stops your Spotify stream. <laughs> so because I was speaking That's because you are streaming Spotify to other people technically. Yeah, fucked up. Alright. Um downplaying nine I mean it'll be downplaying because we're gonna tell you everything wrong with this character. So um her jabs. Let's talk about her jabs. These are really, really, really good. They are six frames. Why? But continue. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't she really doesn't need the six frames, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think if there's one change I would make to nine to make her like dead of the road mid tier. It's changed these to seven frames. <laughs> like, these are so fucking good. Um, uh, jabs are really good. Uh, do you have improvement? You don't have improvement mod, do you? I do. Uh, uh, I was going to suggest you turn on the hitboxes. Yeah, uh, where's that? That would probably help. If so one, I believe, is the yep. options for oh, that. Oh, here we go. Yeah. There we go. So, so observe. So this is her best one in uh, because it is. The fastest and has the least amount of total frames. So 4A is the one that 9s will be using to try and mash out or a bar A most frequently. That's how large it is. You probably can't do much to this. You probably cannot do much to this, I'm sorry. Um, her 4B, this is usually used as like a safe jump option. It's not actually safe jumping anything according to the literal definition, but it's... Going by the hitbox, it's sort of retracting itself, so it's putting yeah. you a little further away from the opponent. Yeah, she does lean forward with her head, but, like, she leans backwards with her body, so two A's or whiff. And this one's big. This one's just big, which makes it the best for combos, generally. Um, let's cover the next most important thing, I feel, which is her 5B. This is, like, her main neutral button, which is really weird to say. Like, you know, it's pretty long, right? It's good. But let me show you the combo she gets if she hits uh, 5B at this range. That didn't even combo. <laughs> that That's the combo she gets. So if you want the actual combo she can get. How do you do drive? Uh, but yeah. I assume you're trying... You want to retain the, the other things, right? Yeah, like, you, you could... This is kind of what's going to happen most of the time, right? 5B, 5B, stock swap. That, that that's, that's neutral baby, right? So... Well, it's very obvious what you need to do about that. You will jump, right? Oh no, I whiffed and now Ragnar's in my face and I'm minus. What do I do? Well, here's what she does. 6C, right? This thing. 
this thing right here, you need to be... Th th this is it, right? This is this is not neutral. This is it. This right here? That's that's neutral button one. This you know is neutral the, button um, two. The Guilty Gear guide. Mm. Where it's talking about figure out your neutral buttons on the ground and figure out your neutral your anti air. Yeah. That's nine neutral right here. It's just that. This this is it, right? Like the only other thing nine can do, which I'll touch on a bit more later, is this. This is really good because you can do J A and like we will cover how to beat this later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's large, as you can see. Um, doesn't hit down too much. But it's but large. But she has J2A for that. Yes, uh, she has this, but... Wait, that's actually a lot smaller than I... Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, never mind. That's fucking massive. Um, yeah, so those are the main buttons she has to work with. Every button that I just showed you, she has the same button, but a different element. Right? Uh, you can IAD over 95B as well. Yes, you can uh, IAD over 95B. Uh, there you go. There you go. Straight over. Oh, that was a bit close to be fair, but yeah. Um, so, 9 inherently is going to be then pigeonholing you into either guess if she's going to cover the air or the ground, and then run at her or jump at her in the opposite one to what she covers. Um, but she does have, like, this is her 6C, right? Note the angle, right? Angle's I think, quite fucking strong. And in fact, as you can see, it can hit people at head height who are in front of her, like this. There are some characters that doesn't hit at head height, but they're mostly S on the shorter size. The, the average characters will get hit by this. Yes. Um, but, then we have this. So this is obviously a different angle. This reaches a bit more upwards. Uh, this one, I find, is probably her most useful at actually anti-airing in the sense of stopping someone jumping in. Um, it's also got the least recovery, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be very wrong about that. I will go to Dust Loop while you continue. Um, then her 6A. This one is, like, I guess the closest she has with an except with a weird exception later. This is, like, the one she'll actually use like how other characters would, where it's like, oh, they're on top of my head. This is the one that she uses there. I find that this button is actually not very good, um, a lot of the time, because if they're in range to get hit by this... There is a good chance that they're already kind of hitting you. Nine's goal in neutral is not to hit them when they're on top of you. Like, right? yeah, see that right there. That was a perfect example. Let me. Right, she does not want to be reactively doing this because it very rarely works. What she wants to be it doing have actual head involved as well. Yes, no actual head involved. That's good to remember. What she wants to do is keep the opponent at range. Right, um, she's a zoner. Crazy, I know. She's Nelson. Sort of. <laughs> uh, Dalsim is the long arm guy, long right? Long guy. Yeah. She, you, she's you like had your normals are uh, generally better than your opponents, but... Uh, the, the, uh, the, dif the difference between her and Dalsim, though, is that her pokes are... You cannot challenge them because they do not have a hurt box. Yes. yes. Um, so... They also don't hit full screen, so... Her two... Uh, her two X buttons, right? They are all effectively identical. Um... I think it's really cute how 2B has, like, this dead zone that nothing in the entire game will ever fit in. <laughs> but it's just, you know, there's just a gap there. Um, 2A, it's a simple one. 2C. 2C is probably the one you want to focus on the most. I'm going to spam 2C for a while. And then I'm going to press 3C, alright? Watch really carefully. Did you see it? You have to be able to notice that difference. That's, that's going to be important for setups later. But... The short version is that 2C is just like, someone has a fire effect on the ground in a really cringy, corny way. But 3C is like, it's a circular pattern in front of her, right? You can kind of see that it extends in a circular way. The difference between those will be important, but otherwise you don't really need to care about 2A and 2B as anything particularly notable, other than they are that element. Um... Her 4X buttons, I've already kind of covered them. 6X, I've covered them. And then her 5X buttons, 5A is a nice poke. Possibly, as Dustloop says almost word for word, possibly her best ground poke because it's quick, simple, has the range she wants, but isn't like obnoxious. Um, I don't tend to use this very much though. Which makes me think maybe it's not her best ground poke. Can't you, just an aside, can't you yeah. confirm like 5A freeze and then crimson raider and pick up after that i believe that was possible uh yes 
Oh wait, I yeah. realize you're you're right. You're you're a few seconds behind, right? Um, yes. Uh, that is something she can <clears> do. <throat> uh, she can also actually no no. no ah! I'm, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, I need to stop myself. But there is a really cool combo she can do without needing to confirm exactly what to that. Do not go become but we're not, yeah. unscripted hide. We're not going unscripted. All right, so we've we've covered her grounded normals for now. Uh, we'll leave... Okay, I guess we'll talk about this. Um, so let's let's do air first. So air buttons. Um, we're going to talk about her... Tel no, teleport has to come first, right? Teleport has to come first. So, teleport. Um, really easy way to explain this. Her first teleport is on the x-axis. Her second teleport is x-axis or y-axis. Uh, hopefully you remember quarter geometry from high school. Remember when your teacher said this would never be useful? They lied to you. Because you didn't pay attention to math, you are doomed against Nine the Phantom. Um, but, jokes aside, um, x-axis is a cross, right? I cannot teleport up i just jump i cannot teleport down i just teabag right i have to teleport that way first but then after that i can teleport up or down with my second teleport all right that's it that's all you need to know for teleports initially if you remember that you are most of the way to dealing with nines neutral. <laughs> That's slight overstatement, but also not that much of an overstatement. So, next, let's talk about how she can use that offensively, right? I'm going to hold barrier after my first teleport, so you can see how long it takes for me to be able to block, right? So there is, like, a noticeable stand there animation for a bit, but she can block fairly quickly. Let's look at the second, second teleport in a row, all right? Notice that's a lot longer. All right. The second teleport is also counter hit recovery. Yes. Compared to other people. Second teleport is counter hit recovery, so just smack her. <laughs> I think it's more noticeable. Isn't the teleport? Uh, doesn't the teleport have more recovery when it's done in the air? Or yes. Am I misremembering? I believe it is. Yes. Um. Now, this is really hard to demonstrate with the bot. Um. In fact, I should probably change which characters which to show what I'm. I'll get there in a second. All right. So, how could Nine use this offensively? Well, uh, your day zero nine will do something like this. Teleport into a, a range, but not like close up. Like we don't want to be in Ragnar's range here, right? This is bad for Nine. We want to be here because Ragnar can't re. I mean, he can reach here, but it's going to take him. It's going to be a lot riskier for him. So we want to be here. So day zero nine is I'm going to teleport into that range. That's cool and all, but Ragnar has the counterplay of being able to, you know, move. <laughs> he is not Tega, he can move. So, that's not very useful. But what is useful is this. This is probably the noob killer, right? Like, I... I, I actually, no, noob is unfair. This is beginner to intermediate killer. Um, you kind... It's kind of the gateway to learning how to deal with nine. Um, because she hits you with this one too many times, and you have a Joker moment, right? You're just like, that's it. This, this bitch needs to be put down. We need to kill. So, IADJA is essentially what we're looking at. It's instant air teleport, so IATP, but it's just instant air dash, right? So, how do you deal with this? <coughs> you, you smack her. My god. I, I know, it's yeah, crazy. is usually the best anti-air here. Uh, you might want to swap with the characters around yes. so you can actually demonstrate. So, Ragnar, uh, we're going to use Ragnar, but understand that not every character has a jab that hits at shoulder height. Uh, hold on, let me... There we go. Um, so, uh, let me get the recording. I'm really bad at doing this offline, because I have the timing mastered. This is me trying to teleport right now, by the way. <laughs> the stick. I'm trying to use the, use the analog stick. You know what? Let me just... I'm going to cheat. I'm a fraud. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Fucked up. We live in a society, bros. Um, so. Alright. We're in neutral. Wait, what? Why is she going backwards? <laughs> <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> While dropping setups, you're so right, Moon. 
All right, you know what? Let's just do. You, why don't you? Why don't you teleport through then record it? Wait, what do you mean? Like, wait, shit. I'm really <laughs> bad at recording. So you mean like, wait? We start recording here and teleport through. What? It's it's a relax. You get okay, so you get control of the character before you start recording. There's two button presses. One of yeah. them you get control, so you can actually teleport through beforehand. There we go. Hey! All right, so <laughs> this was grim. So, uh, if she does IADJA, watch this. She's not acting. She's not acting there. She cannot do anything there. Unless she does the follow up teleport. Like that. So, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Why is it like this? Wait, I'm not stupid. Maybe I am stupid. Hold on. Answering seldom raised question. Okay, but how long, how often will they IAD into your jab range? They often don't. And the main situation that this uh, technique is useful in is when you have decent enough mobility to actually run into that position. Yes. So for example, a good character to do this with is S because her run speed's fairly high. So you just run up jab her and well we're going to cover how you deal with the other options afterwards because hey she can teleport up or teleport again so you can see on stream here i'm, I'm demonstrating the os you want to be using right this is that's not quite the option slate i'd say but it depends on the character yes yep. uh this is probably the there's a few os's you can do right this is the one that gets aggressive um you are looking to catch anything that attempts to be aggressive if nine teleports through you i'm not going to cover literally anything here by the way we'll be here for hours but nine cannot teleport infinite ways if she does the instant air dash teleport at you she's got back to where she came from in which case out of your range up which you can catch with a rising jab after checking the first teleport with a jab or she can go behind you in which case if she does that you can do one of many things none of them are guaranteed to work i don't think but you could try and like it run up and character. jab uh, you could try and backdash away um i'm going to talk about it interrupt here yeah go on it, the, uh, whether you can cover all the options nine has here is actually highly character dependent i think most of the characters in the game probably have a way to actually option select versus every single option she has here you do like jab into another button for example for s uh, which is notably not on screen right now, but you, so you'll have to take my word for it, and I'm not sure Hutch would be able to do the option select, is you do 5A, and this hits them if they just recover and just try to do jump and pay, right? And it, you follow that up by doing 6B. And what this does is it will catch up teleport, it will catch back teleport, and if they teleport through you, you get 5B, which also catches the uh, back teleport. But, um... Whether you have access to the sort of option select is entirely dependent on your character. And of whether you can actually you get into position to use it is another question entirely, because you may not have the mobility to actually use this. Exactly, yeah. Which is why certain characters like... Hager? Yeah, well, let's, <laughs> let's look at... Well, I mean, tager has got... He might be able to get close, you know. I mean, like, the thing is, like, okay, you, you get you get into that position as Taker, but why would 9 ID you? You can press, like, 5B or something. Yeah, like, 9 doesn't need to be in against Taker, so it's not likely you'll ever see the situation. Yeah, Azrael is one of the characters I think cannot option select every option there, um, yeah. which is unfor very unfortunate for you. I'm sorry. God, I'm so good. Alright. <laughs> um, Azrael, really? He can't? Yeah, no, I don't. don't I, I think I looked at it. I don't think he has an option to do it. You can jab, like, the. If you're in the perfect. What position. is this character? Wait, I wonder if there's. What are you doing, Hutch? I'm, hold on. No distractions. Get get onto it. Explain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he can just yeah. mash my. Anyway. Anyway. Uh... <clears throat> so. Those are the basics of dealing with teleport, right? Now, nine players are not going to be doing that all the time, especially not ones like me who have been scarred by someone, <laughs> by someone, by someone doing. The reason some... I know so much about this tech is because I was the one figuring it out 
uh, when Hutch was doing this versus me. And it led to a very funny situation where Tuxedo Mask, no no, no hate shade to him, but he told Hutch to just IED jump A at me, which just <laughs> does not work out. <laughs> yeah. But uh, pretty much every character is going to have a way, so a way to check the first teleport with a jab. Every character can do that. I don't care who you are, every character can do that. Even Nine can do that to Nine, right? Um... The follow-up varies, um, but there is one, uni okay, not universal, sorry Tega, once again, but there is one almost universal thing you can do, where you check the first teleport, if you don't succeed in hitting 9, you leave. There you go. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Yeah, just leave. Now, Dingo and I have spoken about this before, and what we decided is the best thing to do against 9, just in general. Um, and this will come up a lot, but this is the first time it's going to come up. Just super jump away. What is she going to do? <laughs> She's going to super jump after you with her high jump height. Yes. Oh, let's, I guess we can make fun of nine real quick. So, all right, let's look at Mew's jump height. All right. Now let's look at her super jump height. Whoa, she went higher. Now let's look at nine's jump height. Now let's look at her super jump height. Nothing changed. <laughs> this character cannot super jump for height. Instead, this is her jump forwards. Right? Let's look at that again. This is her jump forwards. Now let's do her super jump forwards. Whoa! It's like almost double the distance. It's like a regular air dash. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like a dash jump, even. Yeah. Well, considering that she can't naturally dash jump, mm. uh, it does make sense that she is given that option. Yeah. It does reduce her available jump height, though. Yes. Um, so, that's something to note. Where does this matter? About three matchups. Those matchups being like, oh, maybe four. Mew might be, yeah, Mew's kind of one of them if she decides to be cringe. Look, I'm so good at the game, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm behind, but I assume you started spamming signs. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, Amane, Rachel, Lychee, and Mew are probably the four characters that can just be really annoying about jump height and say, like, haha. Uh, in Amane's case, you just can't swat him out of the sky. I won't talk too much about the specifics there. We'll talk about that later. Um, actually, if anyone has questions about your character specifics into Nine, ask that at the end. R write those down or something. Well, just ask them now and I'll write them down. Yeah. If you have any idea. questions whatsoever, we'll get to them at the end, but feel free yeah. to answer them. Ask them now and I'll write yeah. them down. Exactly. Um, so, we've covered teleport, we've covered the way to deal with teleport, but yeah, uh, super jump, I really just want to harp on that a bit, because I haven't... Like, I think just super jump JA is kind of cracked against Nine. Um... Because she can't chase. This character can't really chase. Um, we'll talk about that a bit more when I get more into, like, proper neutral stuff that she's going to be doing, rather than just, like, basics. But, yeah, just super jump. It's so hard for her to deal with that, especially if she's done something already. If she's just standing there neutrally, super jump. That's not going to really get you anywhere. But if you react to her doing something, just super jump. Um, I will note this hasn't been brought up then since we didn't really cover the air op uh, buttons in much detail. Uh, but if Nine commits to uh, any of her air normals, she's in recovery to landing. Let me... Is... I'll, I'll swap back to Nine and I'm going to demonstrate uh, so many people who are new against Nine. I can immediately tell when someone knows anything about Nine. Because when I do this, they don't punish me. This is suicide. This right here, you are looking... At, like tactical throwing <laughs> um it's actually a bell curve um wow rising ja is so great at the beginning of the bell curve then in the middle of the bell curve it's if i have rising ja i kill myself and then at the very end of the bell curve is oh my god rising ja is so great um but rising ja she cannot act until touching the ground in fact she cannot do so anything right this can't act. Can't act. Can't act. Can't act. Can't act. Can't there, jump are, D. there are two uh, we'll exceptions. Oh. There are two exceptions. One is throw. We can keep going. The second one. 
is a spell deploy besides the empty one. We're going to get to spells in a second. Because that's going to segue into more advanced stuff. But uh, empty, she just sinks to the ground. It stops her momentum entirely, sinks her to the ground. Um, which, by the way, it stops her momentum entirely. It's pretty handy. Um, uh, let's also talk about uh, J2A. So something she can do to call out people who, like, a common strategy... Uh, or layer one, I guess, is like, oh, nine's IAD at me. Let me micro dash two A, right? Because that'll that is going to be able to hit her from below. Because look at JA's. Uh, where is it? Oh, too much overlapping there. I'll get it. I swear. There we go. So as you can see, if you're crouching and press two A, guess who gets hit? It's nine. Nine gets hit. So what you want to do? what most people do is try to 2A her if she does this at IAD height. But she can punish that. Which brings me to her other air normals. Which, uh... P she that was a perfect example. She can't actually punish it at IAD height, because yes. at IAD height, jump 2A will work. I'm using... But... I am using J2A here. This is her fastest... This is her fastest. So I barely yep, squeezed it, it in there. Out. It just doesn't come out almost all the time. Um... You need to not be at ID height. For yes, it to come but if you're not. higher up, there we go, right? Um, you're you're more likely to see these in a jump in situation with uh super jump J two B. Um, she has an interesting RPS about that that I will dive into a bit later. Um, but she does have J two X normals. Uh, let's just look at them real quick. Just like her J two X is like the opposite to her six X, right? Six X, so six A is right above her. Six B is like kind of a diagonal and 6c is like almost like it's the closest to horizontal um same thing with her j2x's j2a is like right below her it's what she's going to be using to uh instant overhead you it is an instant overhead it just doesn't lead to anything without uh counter hit into particular spells or fairy being out or another spell technically um her j2b is this one's one of her best neutral tools you will see this a lot um I, uh, yes, you will see this a lot. Um, it's just really good. Just super jump J2B. It's really hard for a lot of characters to deal with without hard calling it out. Um, it's not that it'll beat your hard call outs either, but like, it, yeah. And then J2C, it's the most horizontal of them. You will like never see this button outside of combos. There is very rarely a reason to use it other than a nine building a spell. That's basically it. Um... If she does use J2C on you, you should probably have some kind of alarm bell going off that Rock is probably coming soon. We'll talk about spells probably now, actually. So let's... The Rock is being cooked. So, let's talk about Nine's Drive. We've talked about her A, we've talked about her B, we've talked about her C, and the elements corresponding, right? They are... I almost... Actually, one last rule of thumb about her spells. Her A buttons are the shortest duration. They... The water ones, they are usually the fastest. If they're, Some of them don't have a speed difference, by the way. Sometimes, like, f uh, 4A, 4B, and 4C, they're all 6 frame starter. But 4A is the shortest overall duration. 4B is the same as 4A, but extra actives, I believe, but less recovery. I might be wrong about that. Um, and then 4... Well, no, that's her B buttons. Uh, and then 4C is just the worst of both worlds, but it's fire. So... 9's A buttons tend to be her fastest in terms of total frames. Her B buttons tend to be the most active. And then her C buttons also tend to be fairly active, but have the most recovery by far. Um, and by far, I mean like two or three frames. <laughs> um, but that is, for, in Blaze Blue, that's a lot, um, especially for 9. Um, so those are the rule of thumbs. A is the fastest overall, B is more active, and C is just not, it's usually the worst or tied the worst. Um, but fire leads to her best spells. That's very important to know. So, now that we know that, let's talk about her drive. We haven't spoken about her drive yet. Not really. Uh, at round start, her drive is this. It's this weird purple prickly thing. Uh, don't you like this hitbox? <laughs> the everlasting swirl or whatever it is. Sure. Shawl. It's... Yeah. I actually have to use two hands to try and pause at the right time here, because there's two hitboxes, I think, right? There I mean, it is! Step there we go. I'm so good. F frame uh, perfect. Yeah. Um, so... Touch. Just step through next time you need to do that. You're right. 
I don't know how to do that. I don't use training mode. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's one of the um, hitbox overlay th uh, functions yeah. from improvement mod, so uh, you need to use that instead. Freeze frame 5.11. Yeah, so you can, yeah. Yeah, so you can go freeze frame, and then when you want to like get to the next thing, you can uh, step. So you yeah. freeze frame, so click it, and then skip frame. You like... need to unpause the... Yeah. So you need to go to the actual game and unpause it there for step frame to actually do anything. Oh, here well. we go. There you go. Yeah. We're, we're learning live. We're learning live. Okay, uh, yeah, and then yeah. turn off freeze frame. Yeah, it just skip the frame. Okay, thank you. you can change the value to make it step through yeah. more frames at once if you want. Yeah. So, um, this thing sucks. I'm going to barrier right after I use 5D just so you can see how long it takes 9 to block. This is grim, <laughs> right? This is not good, but you know it is good. Oh, I wrapped it. This, it's it's just faster, and it's really fast. This is really good. Um, this is probably one of Nine's best round start options. It's also a really good way to bait out like, if you see a character jump at mid to high level in Blaze Blue, you're you're already just like getting your option to deal with an air approach ready, right? If you see a 9 do this, you want to be ready as soon as possible to anti-air. So a lot of people are going to be, like, Twitch reacting ready to, like, oh, she's left the ground, I'm going to anti-air her. But this is, like, rude. This right here is just rude. Because you can do this, and then 3C. Bop, 3C. And so, it's really good for, like, baiting people to do stuff. But as a round start option, it's, like, about it, like the same risk as like jabbing or with like her five uh four uh four a yeah or maybe four c even um it's so good uh i would recommend learning what your character has to deal with that i'll be honest with you a lot of characters do not have anything to deal with it around start range you just have nothing i mean three c on a lot of characters will work though 3C on a lot of characters will work, right, if they catch you landing. Yeah. Um, but one thing a lot some characters should be able to do is just uh, micro dash crouch block. Yes, that it's high execution, but uh, that is a, in my experience, that's a reasonable option versus nine yeah. round start times. But um, you need to be careful with doing it because if you're not very quick on your starting to block, you might get caught during the running and just get clipped by 6C at round start. Yes. And the other thing, the other thing you can do at round start is to just hold back. Yes. She has no option that will hit you if you just hold back. Well, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure her three C will hit. No, it does not. Her three C. I've I've tested this multiple times. Her three C. If you hold back, you will walk out of its range before it can hit you. Hold on. This isn't the best way to test this. I know. I'll test it with frame perfect stuff. Don't worry. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll get the conclusion to that shortly. Um, just a quick reminder, everyone. I am going to be making another video that's going to condense this in a more presentable format. So don't worry too much if this is an absolute house fire. Um, but yeah, uh, walking backwards or walking at, at the very least a micro walk back into crouch is pretty much the best thing you can do against nine. She cannot call that out in the sense of getting like instant reward um but she can make you block with her 5b um 5b is definitely going to reach if you walk backwards but then you just block it um and she's not going to be able to do much else other than like 5b 5b whoosh blow your back um anyway so we've we've spoken about shawl shawl now let's talk about what happens when she hits you. You've, you've already seen it a few times. You, if you're watching this, you almost certainly already know, but let's cover the basics. Um, if she hits you with an element, she gets that element as a stock. As you can see there, well, stock is actually her back pocket, but she gets that available as a ribbon around her body. As you can see now, she is just nine. But now you hit and nine with a blue ribbon. And if you, because I hit with water. Now what if I happen to hit with air? Wow. Now I've got a green ribbon and you guessed it, if I hit with a red button, a fire button, I'm gonna get the red ribbon. Whoa! So, Nine builds her drive slash drive specials, I guess you could call them. Um, they're kind of specials, kind of not. Um, but she builds them by hitting the opponent. She cannot kunzai you at the start of the game. 
she does not have access to the scary rock now she doesn't have access to any of her spells besides the empty shawl so right now if you want neutral tips against nine don't be near her don't block her shit stay away run away make her chase you because she does not have any of those oppressive tools until she hits you now sure you're not hitting her either but she's not able to run that like disgusting offense or oki or neutral without actually making you block that sounds useless and it's like oh that's a waste of time i'll, I'll have to block eventually you will but just try to not block as much as possible. <laughs> Don't let her get those spells. Um, so let's talk about her spells. Um, level 1 freeze. We refer to this as level 1 because she has 1 freeze stock. Uh, it's just a freeze. Now what happens if we have 2 water stocks and we freeze? Freezes for a bit longer. And that's right, you guessed it. Level 3 freeze freezes for pretty much the same duration but it does more damage i think it does more damage oh that's a good question oh we're about to learn today so that does 1200 and this does all right it does do more damage all right we it does it's so marginal it's not funny um so that's freeze that's the infamous one nine aims to use that every combo um just because it leads to the best knockdown for her um let's talk about wind now wind or wind tunnel when you cast it it's just a big old whoosh. Um, level 1 goes this far. Does not hit full screen. Let's look at level 2 now. It does not go full screen either. Level 3. It does not go full screen either. In fact, there is effectively no difference. Um, the differences in is how long the knockdown is. It's very marginal. In fact, I... Can I... Yeah, too far. Um, so what if I'm... You know, we're going to learn right now. Touch. Okay, no. Right, you can't. No, no. I'm just testing. <laughs> For the sake of science and information. Okay. So, Wind Tunnel is only useful against zoners, really. Otherwise, it's just, like, this annoying little shit that's going to hit you one time, but then Nine has no spell. Um, Doesn't it uh, lead to a combo on counter hit or something? I thought it... Uh, so... Or am I misremembering? Hold on. Also, just for the, the VOD boys, since I mentioned it in chat already and we don't have it on stream, uh, the conclusion to whether 3C hits you walking backwards on round start is it's character specific. For example, ah. Jin gets hit, Mew does not. Ah. The Obviously, it varies on backhawk speed because like some characters yeah. have slower backhawks, <clears throat> like out on Tsubaki, they probably struggle more. However, the other the other caveat you need to re remember is that uh, humans generally cannot do a frame perfect round start three That's C. True. That's true. However, a frame perfect backwalk is always possible because your backwalk your your back input is it's constant. Buffered. Yeah, yeah, it's constant. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's wind tunnel. There's nothing great about it. Uh. I would say the one thing it does really well is that it can catch you unawares in situations like this. Imagine, like, low HP scenario, we've got a bit of walking forwards, and Nine does this. She can confirm it into a super immediately. And I get a quick 2.5 um, off of quite a long button, um, which is quite nice. That's probably the best use it has. Otherwise, it's... You don't need to worry about it too much. Now, let's look at her fire. Uh, this is essentially a combo tool. But it's a combo tool with some very aggressive tracking. Um, that matters almost never. But it does come up from time to time. So this. Coral, it's called. It's just a fire pop. But it tracks quite well, as you can see. It does not track full screen. Like, look here. We're whiffing. That's, that's the max range there. But this is quite a good tool to have in the back pocket. If you ever see Nine with fire in her back pocket, she's in her element, pun intended. Um, very handy for her, and that spell right there is why. Uh, it's a great combo tool, but not something you need to worry about. This is also one of her two fatal counter starters at level 3. She Does it is... lead to significantly better damage? A lot of fatal counters it... are bad starters. This is her best starter? Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. 
It's one of those. But when are you ever going to get that? <laughs> I know you punish a DP and you have three fire stocks or something. But why? <laughs> that, like, I'll tell you right now, I have played this character for a lot of hours and I've never yeah, once look, done that. I've got, I've, got, I've got the solution. You need to accumulate three fire stocks, store <laughs> them, and then block a DP. Swap back use fire and get you're right up. because my opponent is going to be constantly thinking of dp'ing nine the phantom from this range exactly <laughs> um, uh, anyway sorry. but yeah no you're fine um so c buttons essentially just combo tools right that's really it um well sorry her fire cast is essentially a combo tool um but her c buttons yeah. too that's not wrong so but that's the boring shit let's get let's mix some spells together shall we let's cook if you will so Water Wind. We have the GOAT! And as you can see, this is very self-explanatory. Now, 9 neutral is often very careful, very cautious, reactionary, predictive. But every 9 player, <laughs> without fail, we get GOAT Head, we're doing one thing, and that's super jump barrier forwards. We do not care. That's on you, block that shit. <laughs> um, how do you beat GOAT Head? Uh, outlast its duration is the first one. Um, I'll cast it here, this is how long it lasts. Not that long. I mean, when you're running away from Nine because she's crazy and jumping at you, it feels like a long time. But just outlast it. Um, it's also, like, it's possible to beat that with some disjoint. Um, a lot of characters will have something, usually a 2B or a 3C, that are going to be able to hit it without it hitting them back. Um, but oftentimes, like, for most characters, it is not worth trying to contest it unless you are really certain about what you need to do. Um, just in general, you gotta respect it. I mean, okay, you don't... Oh, actually, it does go down with her when she changes block. That is something that, like, I knew in the back of my head, but I never really would have thought about mentioning in a guide. This is really fascinating, actually. It is It is also a projectile. It is a projectile, thank you. Um, and she can combo after it, as you can see. Um, so that is Water Wind. Let's look at Water Fire. Oh, boy, I can hear Dingo oh, scream. I... I can hear... You know, not even Dingo, I can hear everyone screeching already. Uh, <laughs> this was better in CF1. I remember the days <laughs> when I could swap to 9 in CF1 and bully Tibby <laughs> when he was better than me because this character was so broken. So, alright, fellas, here's the situation. You're at the cafe, you see this really pretty lady, she does this and jumps at you, what do you do? <laughs> That's a terrible joke, I don't know if anyone's going to get it. But, uh, this... This wins neutral by itself, because you got to do something about that. And now, those of you who don't know better, have probably just thought, I'll jump over it. You played no. yourself. <laughs> Congratulations, you played yourself. <laughs> um, especially when 9 can just do this. It's like, alright, now you got to run under it. Or duck, rather. Uh, this thing is so oppressive. It's so strong. There are not many characters in the game who can actually pose a consistent answer to this thing. It's like Rachel, a zona such as Mew or Nu. Lychee, maybe if it's from far enough away, but even then that's a risk, I think. So probably not I, think I, th no, I think I think I think Lachi can throw the stick and break it, and then she because, can. But the thing with the stick is like the stick will break, fall down, and then she can throw the stick again. So yeah. Lachi probably can deal with it. My uh, spirit cannot deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just read in chat, Blade Master says, "Man, I swear every spell that's been covered has just been yeah, this is busted actually." No, in the hands of a strong nine player, uh, anything can be busted. Um, with one exception, we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, but mm. uh. So the 9 Discord a while ago, we were making a tier list on spells, and I think that every 9 player that doesn't rate this as the best spell, top 1, is stupid. This is the best spell, like, bar none. It does sometimes not work in certain matchups, but, and you know, it sucks in those matchups, I guess, but outside of those matchups, this thing is fucked. Your answer to that, uh, I'm not even going to bother try inputting that, because I'm going to make myself look like an idiot, but what you need to do is micro dash barrier break you need to do this you need to run into it on your terms and block it with a, see the little slide you get you need to run into it and block it on your terms because nine's goal when chucking this is like she wants 
you to block it at the exact moment that lets her set up for a jump in after and getting close. Congratulations, you've lost neutral, right? Um, so what she's looking to do is do this because that keeps you blocking if you choose to block it. And if you jump over it, she's already in the air ready to tag you and get a absolutely nasty looking combo that's gonna do an air knockdown off of Raider or Empty Shawl chuck you into the amethyst and then full combo you with two spells one spell in her front spot pocket one spell in her back pocket we'll talk about pockets later um so amethyst is put this puts the fear of god into you so if you have a barrier break you need to be abusing that if you do not have a barrier break hopefully your character has something else like susano has 6a i shit you not susano's counterplay to that is backdash to create some new distance make the nine adjust her timing 6a that shit and then nine is forced to like panic jump in and if she didn't do it fast enough you will just anti-air her um there's so many things you can do if you don't have a run but being able to block it on your own terms with a barrier break is the best thing you can do um very important uh some people saying some weird shit in chat people don't listen to Mega players being like i will use this barrier break tick <laughs> Gauntlet Hades over Amethyst, that ain't working, sir. Um, so, Amethyst is probably her best spell. I, I personally believe it is just her best spell. Um, so, we've covered the water combos. Let's talk about the wind combo now. The last one I haven't spoken about, which is... <laughs> wind fire! Mirror, mirror, on the wall, what's the most mid spell of them all? Uh, it's this one. This one... Hey, you can kick it at them. You can! And it creates a hitbox. Uh, it's all. It is also a hitbox. I uh, <laughs> when Runus and I played last, I actually got a kill combo with it. <laughs> I actually did something with it. It was very strange, but it has to counter hit. I think. Let's let me check. Yeah, it has to counter hit to get a combo. Um, and only in corner. Uh, it reflects projectiles. I don't know if anyone else is like me, but whenever you see a mirror in a video game like this, you just assume it reflects projectiles. Uh, it does exactly that. Um, it does not reflect the projectile, actually. It it gets absorbed a new by one. the mirror and creates a new one that fires back. Um, hey Hutch, do you mind if we go back to the previous spell? Oh yeah, the sure. The landing ball? Uh, well, we got a, a good question brought up in chat. Of course. It ain't perfect, but why not dash jump barrier? No reason to press a button when taking to the skies. Like, yeah, you're still blocking, but you're you, not getting you're, you're blocking? What's going to happen there? Let me... Oh yeah, no, no, no. You do not want to do that. Hold I on. can tell you, I can explain why. It's because if you dash uh, barrier, the nine is going to be in the air and she's going to take you to the ground and you are going to block it as you are falling. At which point you are screwed because you're now in a. The question is more like, why don't you just try to land into it? At uh... least if I'm interpreting it correctly. Uh... Like you try to. No, it's not just like you. What are you doing here, Hutch? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm demonstrating what happens if you try oh, like to you be in the free. air. Yeah, in in the air relative to Amethyst. If you choose to jump block. Um, what you're doing is you're giving Nine the ability to create a rock and either drop it on your head as you land, or store it in her back pocket and bait your DP. Right. Which is a somewhat tricky mix-up situation. Yes. Because you need to land or 3C. In my opinion, that is very rock. firmly in Nine's favor if that's happening. So, I do not recommend... Like, you're not getting hit, yeah. But, it's you're the same as... You're putting yourself in a bad situation afterwards. But, like, think of it this way, right? If you jump in the air you're letting her get so jump in the air and block she gets kunzite if you stand on the ground and block she hits you with a wind spell and starts pressure she's starting pressure either way but if you're in the air she builds kunzite for free as well okay so i firmly think that jump barrier is like the second worst thing you can do after getting hit but I'm willing to be proven wrong, but I, I have never seen a situation that ends well for my opponent other than them having a large and fast DP that I do not fail, that I do not fail, that I do fail to predict and I get hit when I try to drop rock on them. That's the Okay, well here's, here's another comparison going yeah. back to this. <clears throat> uh, is it better to give nine, to jump into it like that and give nine kunzite than it is for nine to get access, to get a free jump in uh, with uh, just blocking it because you can't dash block it? I think, I mean, like, her jump Looking in... at this from the is, perspective of poor mobility characters, is J, So she jumps in with J2B. Like, she could jump in with some other stuff, but J2B is always the jump arc 
that she wants to be at. Um, she has a wind spell, so then she's going to be standing about this distance. Uh, if, if they're blocking the lightning ball, right, uh, why do you need to jump in with jump B? Um, because it's usually got the best angle from where you're casting lightning ball, unless it's oh, okay. like here. Um, I will say, one of the best things you can do, if Nine uses Amethyst at about this range that I'm doing here, and I'll, I'll repeat it a few times just so people can see, if Nine's doing this, don't backdash! Do not backdash! Do not backdash! You are giving Nine way too much time to set up. Please block it! Please block it! Please block it! You are making Nine's life so much harder than it needs to be if you just block it at that range. Backdashing... It's she's... still plus, right? Oh, it's, it's still plus, but she doesn't get to set up, like the perfect re-engage. Um, it's only plus enough for her to, like, continue pressure from a distance. She, excuse me, she won't I'm, be able to teleport in and then be able to start pressure when you block I'm, I'm going to put something out there that's pretty much my specific because this is something that I've tested. If she does it at that range, she does have a lot of recovery. If you have a move that can go through projectiles or can yes. hit from that range, which is projectile involved, do it because she will be counter hit. So if you do something like... Well, obviously, if you did something like Carnage, uh, Carnage should get hurt. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, that, that would be most. Yeah. If you if you Carnage at that range, she will get counter hit. You get your big combo. Yeah. Since it's a projectile, uh, it has full counter hit recovery. I assume, as yes. like every other projectile. Yes, it does. Um. Uh. So is that all for Amethyst for but now? That's a that's a big call out. But yeah, I, th I believe that's all okay. we've got on Amethyst. Um. I'll talk about it more in combos later. I will actually have to talk about combos, even though this is an anti nine. Because her combos... I mean, combos are relevant for the set play section, yes. right? You need to know what to look because... for to know when the set yes. play is coming. Because her combos will dictate... Like, usually it's only the end, but sometimes she can do some tricky stuff in the middle of the combo to kind of give away what set play is going to happen later. Um, but we'll, we'll get there when we get there. Um, Mirror, yeah, this is, this this creates projectiles. Um, I'll tell you right now, there's exactly one situation that this is good. Uh, one second. <laughs> uh, I know who you're thinking. Yeah, where is she? All right. <laughs> So, this is how you make a Zona feel bad in one easy step. <laughs> Wait, what's the input again? 236, 236. There we go, found it. Is it D or something? Alright. Alright, watch this. Wait, why did it lose? <laughs> oh, it lost because you did um, yours to... Um, oh, I have I to block. I have to block. Interesting. Yeah. There you go. Uh, basically, new... New hurts herself quite a bit. This is the only time it's really good. Um, oh yeah, lol, dead zone. I guess it's also alright against Rachel, if you're a Rachel player. This can be pretty good when you're trying to, like, full screen Lobelia her. Uh, Tega players can't spark bolt, but, like, smart Tega players are usually not just going to spark bolt from full screen the moment they get it. Um, uh, I guess it's okay against Mai, but not really. Um, Can't she just like send the projectile over the mirror? Yeah, instead? she can. Like just throw yeah. it and above and then redirect. So That's true. It's not. It's, it's not, not, great. A, not amazing. Um, most characters, it's it's not. You that can useful, use it this way, but it's not very good. Yeah. Um, use it as Azrael, and you can um, you can reflect a Sentinel dump. <laughs> yeah, you can. It's so dumb. <laughs> um. So next, what are we talking about? We've we've covered we've covered all the two combos. All right, let's talk about the 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 three button combos. So, we have... Here it is. This is the worst 9 spell. Oh, yep. It's <laughs> got one use. <laughs> it just creates a fucking red box. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's... <laughs> that's its hitbox, right? When it you jump. If you ever jump, then uh, it, it actually does a hit. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually comedy. Um, yeah, so... If you try to jump... Hold on, actually, can you no, use this in combos? Uh, you can combo off it, but it is not. it doesn't work if they're already in hits done. Um, Bruh. Hold on, so... Imagine if you managed to combo someone with this. They deserve it. There you go, a 1000 damage combo. <laughs> oh wait, it's got... it's a poor starter and it doesn't yes. even do damage. Yeah. <laughs> it's... Really bad. <laughs> Look at that damage! With a super as well. Oh, we oh. hit 2k, crazy. Uh, <laughs> Half of it was minimum damage. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's 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 her worst spell. Now, 
Does it still have uses? Absolutely. I bring to your attention the cat on steroids, Taokaka. She is all over the screen. And that match actually, to some degree, uh, Valkenhayn as well. Uh, that spell is actually all right against them. But really only them. I don't think it actually does enough to anyone else. Um, you mean Rachel can't play the game? No, Rachel can play the game. She just can't do the ideal approach. It's... I don't think it does... Okay. Saying it does nothing to Rachel would be disingenuous. But it does very little to Rachel. I won't spend too much time on this. You don't need to really know. Uh, a 9 player, if they're being rude to you, will use this for an unblockable setup. <laughs> but... There is a much more reliable way to do that, which we will talk about quite soon. Um, so the next one is Cross Bomb. This is hey, my. Hey, I have something to inter interject oh, regarding yeah. the Gravity Well. Yeah. Apparently, if you press four D, this is from Dust Loop. Apparently, if you yes. press four D, it's in front. It will spawn at nine. Yes. Rather than so at the opponent. So five D, it spawns at the opponent, and four D, it spawns at nine. Except it didn't for that time. Wait, why did it not? Did I just fail to press you already, No, you already had it out, I think. Oh, That's okay. why. There you go. Um, it just respawn it where it was before, if you if it's already out. Maybe? I'm not sure. But, That's uh, a bit weird. That, uh... That's the... Yeah, sorry, you're only ever using it for 4D, realistically. Because 5D, it doesn't activate immediately. It has some wind-up. And so the Takaka, the Valk, or the Rachel is just like, Nope! Running in now! And it's like, uh help <laughs> um oh I mean, they're no longer near it yeah Rip. yeah and even then they don't like it gives them too many options to be really reliable especially when you have a better version of this as another spell we'll get to that in a moment um so let's talk about cross bomb this is my this like on my two characters i always have one thing in particular that i gravitate towards pun intended that others don't this is this is it i love this spell um so i'll just tap 5d and demonstrate what it does that's, that's B. Amazing. So, it just creates a plus on the screen that blows up. It's pretty cool. It's quite plus if done in the corner, but it's very rare to get that set up. Now, 9 can hold the drive button and vaguely control it. She doesn't get perfect control, but she can influence whether it goes up or down while holding the button keeps it going forwards. So, she can do this. Right. Um, and as you can see, it actually does quite good damage if it, like, erupts on your character. Yeah. Over 2,000 damage as a starter is quite a lot. Um, you will... <sighs> There's one big problem that it has. It has a P2 on every single hit. No. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> I'll let lag catch up a bit there, but, uh... Oh yeah. <laughs> it has one HP and dies. <laughs> so uh Well it also has a P2 on every single hit as well. So it will scale your damage by quite a bit. Honestly, that's not a problem with nine. This character's damage is quite pathetic for the most part anyway. So But this will make it even worse. No, because like it does so much damage by itself that it's like it's just a normal combo anyway. Like watch, let me let me show you. 2.5-ish there, with having rock stored in back pocket. That's, like, pretty normal for 9. <laughs> That's on the lowish end. It, it is slightly yeah. lower than average, I think. But, yeah. Um, cross Bomb, it's... That's, like... It can be used in neutral, but you just smack it, or you just go into the quadrant that it can't hit you in. Um, or... But also, let me let me bring it up. Yeah. By itself, the, if you hit with every single hit, all 16 of them, you have effectively reduced your damage. Your, it's effectively a 26% paration move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, like, bad paration is like 80% or 84%. And it's 26. This is 26. Yeah. Uh, so it's not great. Like that's that, that's the no, only that's way to awful. that's the only way to put it. This 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 thing is not great. Um, it can be used in certain instant overhead setups, and I will teach you to recognize that later when we get to the setup section. Um, I'm gonna move along a little bit because we're about an hour in. Um, so next we have, I guess I'll start with wind, wind, fire. All right. 
This is a fun one to talk about. I like this one a lot. So remember how we had the gravity scene? What if it actually did something worth our time? My god. What if we could actually use it on a knockdown? Now, actually, that's something very critical. You don't ever need to worry about gravity seed on knockdown unless Nine specifically puts it in her back pocket because her knockdown tool is 3C, i.e. fire. And gravity seed cannot be built with fire. <laughs> So you cannot get Gravity Seed off of a knockdown. You have to do something else, like solve the Da Vinci Code mid-combo, to be able to actually get it as an Oki option. Um, Fire Rain, or Meteors, or Uvaravite, if you're a weirdo, uh, those are... That, that's it. That's... It's really, really good. It's part of her unblockable setup. I'll talk about that later. Uh, it... It has some vague tracking. Uh, so, like, if I'm at full screen and I use it, it deploys and then it tracks Ragnar. Um, it doesn't track for the whole time before activation, but for most of it. Uh, it also... Uh, it does damage based on... Okay, watch the hitbox. I'm going to use it again. Watch the hitbox that comes out of the fire rain at the top. Right? They're little well, squares. It's a bunch of different projectiles, right? So it depends yes. on how close you are up to the top. If you're further yes. down and... It also depends on how large you are. If you're Tagu, you're going to get hit by more of them. Y yes, but if you don't, do not jump into it carelessly, because you need to block that shit. Because if you don't, that is a pretty decent starter and 2,500 damage off the bat immediately. <laughs> um, don't want to be doing that. It gives Nine a chance to set up more Oki with like hitting 3k damage, and Nine is not a character that's meant to hit 3k damage very often. Um, she can hit it barely off of like super optimal starters with optimal combos, but well, okay, to be fair, 6C just does it automatically because 6C is a broken button with great damage. Um, uh, Fire Rain also has another really useful property that makes it a lot better for neutral. The higher up 9 is, the wider it spreads out. And so it covers over half the screen at that point, which forces you to kind of approach her or just block. Um, it's a very difficult tool to use in that regard because people are just going to run at you. It also whiffed on Ragnar there. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what? I have never seen that. I have never seen that. I'm gonna okay, after this is over, I'm gonna work on recreating that. I have never seen that. Oh there I mean, it is! He's, <laughs> he's just like entering the matrix, that's all. <laughs> he's beginning to believe. Um yeah, Fire Rain's really good. It is something she can do on Knockdown, right? We're going to talk about it quite a bit on Knockdown. Um, actually, we're going to talk about it a lot on Knockdown, and I'm probably going to start getting myself angry about it. We're going to talk a lot about that on Knockdown. Um, uh, her next spell to look at is Water, Fire, Fire, which is Seed. Uh, seed is very simple. Saving Rock for last, I see. Yes. <laughs> uh, seed is very simple, but very, very rude. Um... It's going to require... Okay, let me tell you right now, for 9 to use it, it is literally as easy as press fire, press wind, press fire, press the D button, and then jump and cover you if you jump. If you don't jump, you have to block two hits. The first hit that makes contact with you is a low. Let me, let me rephrase that again. The first hit that makes contact with you, the defender, is a low. Not the first hit. The first hit that makes contact with you. If you jump over the first hit and then land, the second hit will be a low. If you block the first hit, it is a low. The second hit will be a mid. This is to prevent her from having too much wiggle room for unblockable timings. Um, it also stops her from just being able to unblockable you forever. Uh, it would be very busted if it was two lows in a row. Yes, notepad. Thank you, Mr. Freezing Moon. That, that's a, that's an A+. Plus. Uh, you know, people... You know, never mind, I'm, I'm not getting distracted. I, I am, but I'm not. Um, so, Seed. It's really strong, and Nine does not need to think at all when she uses it, and it requires you as the defender to, like, mentally go into overdrive. Um, I cannot... Th this is where the difficulty with Nine starts. I cannot sit here and tell you everything that Nine can do with Seed and everything you need to do in response to that, because n the Seed is, like... Very quickly, I'm realizing one of her best spells, and I think that every nine on the planet underutilizes seed immensely. Um, I have been going out of my way to incorporate it in my 
games a lot more. I used to just do it as like a, a decent safe jump option, but I've found that like it kind of does everything. You need you need to know what to do to seed. Um, we're going to talk about setups later, but the gist of it is block the first hit low and then do not block low unless nine is also on the ground. Or just block normally after that is, I guess, is how I would put it. Um, she can unblockable with rising J2A, but the timing is absurdly difficult um, and spacing dependent because seed has like a travel time. Yep. So like, generally, if they're doing trying to do the unblockable, it's most likely going to be a high into a low. Um, so if you block high first and then block low, you will probably catch the timing because generally they will not get the timing to have it like low first. Yes, and then um, high. the only there is a setup that leads to the unblockable. We'll talk about that later. But it requires Nine to have the seed in her back pocket. If she builds the seed off of you blocking there and then tries the unblockable, there was something you could have done. Excluding overdrive. Overdrive always works. But there is something you could have done to stop the unblockable from working. If she just builds the seed and then throws it. Um, uh, someone found my wallet that I didn't even know that I lost earlier. Glad to hear that, Dingo. Um, so that's seed. Honestly, I can't talk too much more about it until we get to setups. Um, and I think there's two left, right? There's only two left to talk about? Yes, there's only two left to talk right, about. We'll, we'll save the most fun one to last. We'll, 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 let, let's bring in the aeroplane. <laughs> Kunzite. Here it is, oh. the 21 frame overhead, the projectile overhead, the plus six on block overhead. I am glad it's plus six. Why? Because, because in CF1, it was plus 28. Yeah. <laughs> she needed it, bro. Um, <clears throat> so what is there to say about Kunzite? Um, I don't... Okay. Everyone listening to this i need you to kind of like prepare yourself for a bit because you're not going to like what i have to say um because everything i'm going to say here is telling you why you should be able to block it <laughs> um it is 21 frames yes that is an absurdly fast standing overhead it is also not a standing overhead if she doesn't want it to be it is also an overhead that she can use in the air and then act after because it's a spell deploying so she can do this um it's very strong do not get me wrong this is probably her second best spell um, it's really hard to, like, this and Amethyst just, like, beat everything out of the water. Uh, this thing is cracked. It baits anti-airs, like, you know, Nine's jumping in. Oh, I'm gonna anti-air. Nope, sorry. Nine gets full combo now. Um, uh, it's really good for damage. It's just good for everything. This, this spell is good. But, it has one critical flaw. In this game, overheads tend to be hovering around the 23 to 24 frame mark right um 23 is probably average at a guess um so you are expected to be able to react to 23 frame overheads more or less just as an aside yeah. the actual telegraph of most overheads well, that's that's where i'm going that's where i'm going is about 12 frames before they become active. yes so it is expected that you are able to see that 12 ish frames and stand up to block it in time so what about kunzai what's the tell for kunzai it is actually frame one. Uh, <laughs> the the tell for Kunzai, she raises her hands above her. Hold on. So pause is that button. So hold on. This is the tell, right? This is the tell frame one where she goes, she does floppy chicken legs. Uh, and she stands a lot straighter. This, I don't, I don't know how other people block Kunzai. When I have to block Kunzai, I personally... Use, I can bring up a couple of methods once. Uh, again. yeah. Uh, I personally use uh my own method, which is just watch when Kunzite is available because I know this character in and out very well, so I know just naturally when Kunzite's going to be there. So I've kind of got an unfair advantage there. But like, there are people. Uh, the one I'm going to point to. Um, can I can I please have Mr. Freezing Moon stand up in the class? Uh, very few people can block Kunzite as well as him. Uh, Brandon's probably the other one. I think those two people block Kunzite the best. Um, so looking for the rock is a trap. Yeah, you don't want to look for the rock. Because the rock's not here. No. Um, oh, Moon does look for the rock. Interesting. Oh, today I learned. Moon is just Moon just has cracked reactions. He's built uh, different. Can I, can I interject yeah, what, what I'd suggest? There, There's a couple of ways you can do for it. So obviously you can look for the actual rock itself. This is not the best method because it's not frame one. Uh, 
the best method is to actually look at her spell bar because yes, the, that's what I do. The icon actually disappears frame one. The moment you press the button, it's gone. Wait, I'm still. That's the telegraph you want to look for. And another, and there's a third telegraph. This is sort of like a universal one. Uh, if she's standing, block overhead. Be uh, because if she's trying to do multiple lows in a row and then tries to go for an overhead, the the changing from low from uh, low to standing will telegraph at frame one as well. Uh, but this is less reliable than actually looking at the icon because you can do something like do a series of standing normals and then threaten low versus an overhead. So if, yeah, tra train yourself to look for the stock, basically. Which is a bit awkward because in fighting games, you generally want to look at the char your opponent's character, since that's where most of the telegraphs are. Looking at your opponent's meter to react to an overhead is not generally what you want to do. And do. I'm, I'm going to say one thing is that that is how I react to it, and Hutch has a very annoying <laughs> way he deals with that, which he is going to go into shortly, I believe. Yes, quite soon. Um, we'll finish up. Uh, so Kunzite, Kunzite is like, I don't think it can ever be part of an unblockable setup. Um, no, it can't. No, it, it's too slow. Yeah, it's too slow. Um, so it can't ever be part of an unblockable. Oh, no, there is technically a scenario you can make it an unblockable, is if you deploy seed while your opponent's in the air, seed one misses, and then in the time that seed two takes to hit your opponent when they land on the ground, you drop a rock above them. That's but that is specific. so absurdly Pacific. Pacific, yeah, it's Pacific, You're not going to guys. actually have that as set play that's yeah. going to, that's going to be something that will happen it's an awkward thing yeah. yeah um so last spell we'll talk about her last spell uh yep clock. Oh, you, you, you've, you've missed fairy by the way oh you're right oh okay fairy how do, you know what fairy just feels like a thing it's not even real uh so fairy yeah fairy's probably the one uh, alongside amethyst and kunzite that belongs at the top um let's let's deploy fairy and see what happens block <laughs> um they're all mids they're all projectiles um this is the most basic form of set play that nine has um i'm gonna give you the really easy answer delay tech just delay tech i'm I, I'll, I'll talk about this more later but just delay tech it um is to never in yeah, yeah, yeah exactly right uh, i don't know who hemi is but they are completely correct uh if you instant tech against fairy owned Owned, you get you get what you deserve. Shut up, life. I'm not a scam artist. I mean, nine's a scam artist, but I I play an honest nine. Uh, um, there is really not much to talk about with fairy until we get to setups because it is a setup machine. Uh, the last one, yep, clock. Uh, it is one of each, and uh, it. We didn't mention something about um oh. rock that Runus brought up. Yeah, Runus said you had something that you did to fuck with people who are looking for. I stuff. I will we talk will, about that when will, I get to we'll talk about later. Yeah, okay. it, it happens later. Um, so this is clock. It's <clears> like <throat> six seconds, I think, give or take a bit. Yep, that's it. But if it stays there, then it is forced. You have to barrier block it. Otherwise, it because it breaks through normal block. And it does 3k damage, and it does have minimum damage, like it's a distortion. So it is essentially a 0 meter distortion, but you can get rid of it by throwing 9 or hitting her. Um, it does or making stay her on... block. Oh, uh, no, no. It does, does it? it doesn't go away on block, thankfully. Um, otherwise, it'd be really fucking bad. But, like, you just walk up to her and throw her, and even if she takes the throw, it's gone. Because, um, like, I... Yeah, see, clock's still there, thankfully. Um... I there's not much to talk about with this. Just don't panic. The simple don't one panic, just, don't get hit. Yeah. Getting I, hit with this is painful. Yeah. Don't get hit. Uh the strategy that most players employ against me that I find the most annoying is they just run away uh they, so they play neutral as normal for a bit. If they don't win neutral as normal for a bit or don't feel comfortable in it, then they start playing the runaway game. And then on the last like tiny couple frames, they stop moving and hold barrier. Um Clock is only active for one frame, fun fact. <laughs> uh, so if you have... If, if you are a god, you can just backdash it, and it'll miss. But if you muck that up, you are taking 3,000 damage, so just be careful. Um, but just play evasive, don't commit too hard. If 9 gets you in a combo with this, 
and she has like a hundred meter in overdrive. That is seven thousand damage. <laughs> um, so just be careful about that. But Dust Loop is can, is just correcting some misinformation here. Unless Dust Loop is wrong, it yeah. is active for five frames, one times five. Uh, I believe that's wrong. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I would also assume that's wrong because. I, I, I won't say that with certainty, but I will be... say with like above 50% certainty. It might be because of the super flash. It might all all of those active frames might be during the super flash. Alrighty. Um, Would be my guess as to how that's wrong, and yeah. someone's just taking it directly off of box docs, like from the game <laughs> files. We're trying to. <laughs> Um, so I think we're done with those. We'll talk a lot more about them in setups. If you have any, like, burning questions about how they can be used, we'll touch on that on the section after this one. The section I want to cover now is going to be real fast. It's specials. But there's two things here that are very important to mention. Nine actually, like, even though she has her spell deploys, like Kunzite, um, she also has just normal specials. Three of them. F four, five, five. I, wait. Right, I'm just going to go through them, and we're going to count them together, right? This is this is uh, learning to count with Hutch. So, uh, let's start with... Got five is correct. Five is correct, okay. Um, so... Assume you don't count air specials as different from ground specials. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, yeah. So, the first one we'll start with is the only one that is just objectively bad. Uh, this one. This is her true anti-air. Um, I would say the pros of this... Are that it's not on the worst input ever, and the cons are everything else. Um, let me show you the what. The pro is it is your only head involved. Uh, yeah, it's move. It's her only head involved move besides like total invulnerability from other stuff, right? Um, it's got the hitbox is all right. Um, it's not uncommon for people to just be above you. Um, in which case you needed to six A earlier, and hope you didn't just get owned. Um, it's not. The worst thing ever, but like I'll tell you right now, if a nine player chooses between using this and just spacing better and using one of her other options, one hundred percent of the time she just wants to space further away and not have to rely on that. Because the reward on hit, look at the reward on hit. Nothing. <laughs> Back to neutral. Hey, it does. It does lead to a combo on counter hit. On counter hit, you get the like the worst combo of all time it is barely more damage than the gravity seed starter <laughs> um i don't know why it's a very short starter don't worry about it it's yeah i i think i have to agree with dingo it is the worst special she only uses it in very certain scenarios um the key one that comes to mind is amane where you need some head involved um, in that case, this is actually pretty good against Amane. Like, I, I'd, I'd rate this decent against Amane. Otherwise, she just does not want to ever use this if she can help it. Um, so, uh, I guess we'll talk about the one that Runus wants me to talk about next. This one. <laughs> Boom! Boom! Big ol' what's this? 26 frame overhead? Shit, slow, bro. Just block it. So, um... I've seen you use it in pressure. What? This? If I'm using this in pressure, it's a misinput, my friend. Oh, oh, yeah, my, I mean... Well, that's the situation that's where hidden vault, that, that, that's the situation where hidden vault, you're doing it preemptively yeah. to take advantage of the hidden vault. Yeah. That's... Right, like, in situations like that, where you don't <clears throat> have enough time to react, um, yeah, it's not good, but it's, it's your only option that has hidden vault. Um, yeah, so we'll talk about... There are a lot of situations like that. But... Uh, I'm gonna do a basic, uh... No, I might have to talk more about Navy in the setups, actually. But uh, Navy Pressure is Nine's other standing overhead. It's very slow. Um, but it is a fatal counter that leads to pretty good damage. This isn't, like, a, a, a terrible fatal. This is, like, an actually decent fatal. Um, it does have a dead zone. Like so. But the corner stops the dead zone from existing. Um... So, it's very common for Nine to do this thing where she goes, this, this, this. Alright, so I've done three hits. So, if after the third hit, w what else is going to come but Kunzai? So, if you are a player who is relatively confident in your reactions, you will just be looking for the rock and block the rock. So, what happens when this giant fist comes out of the sky in a completely different animation and telegraph? Um, it's basically a way to overhead your opponent while they're expecting an overhead. Um, it's also a lot slower, so it catches certain things that actually beat, uh, Kunzite, such as Mai's Flip. 
uh it's all around just a really nice tool to have in your back pocket but overuse leads to dying because uh hold on that can happen where uh that thing is very od unsafe uh most of nine spells to be fair are... every single overhead is like this um no, no but uh it, 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 so not, that that is an exception to the rule but almost could... every other overhead characters have yes. is OD. So I, i'm gonna make the comment uh specifically yeah. with kunzite and that uh kunzite is you cannot odr kunzite because it will hit you during the recovery of your odr mm. you can however do the odos which will make you um recover later but able to act faster that will beat both yeah so if you odos the kunzite and the um fist you will be able to to punish the fist and pressure her for kunzite you cannot punish kunzite with an od <laughs> brodinger i i'm not even hiding it i don't know how to odos and i'm not going to start <laughs> now i don't have time um we, we can give a quick summary of it later just no, uh, yeah. I mean, no, it's like... Well, uh, it'll it'll take, like, less than a minute. Okay, go for it then. Alright, so OD, OD, so regular ODR, right, is you just, you're in block stun, you press the overdrive button, you get ODR. ODOS is, the way you execute it, is you hold D, the D button, you can do it with any button, but the D button is the best, you stop yep. pressing back, you do this while you're in block stun from something else, Yep. Uh, so you don't... Right. It's usually like you, you hold, like, down back... Then when you're in block stun, you hold D, release and back, then you stop and then holding back, and you yeah. continue holding down because you don't want to get hit by like airtight lows, and you start mashing the rapid button or just every single other button on your keyboard. Overdrive button will not keyboard, but um, you you start mashing every single other input. Uh, so what ends up happening is during block stun you or hit stun you don't get burst or OD, or ODR, but the moment you leave um, hit stun or block stun you will get the first frame of one of your normals. And then on the second frame, you will Kara cancel into Overdrive. Which, it, since it's raw Overdrive, you get the full duration of Overdrive, and it's only 16 frames, which means you get to involve through the active frames and then recover fairly quickly to punish anyway. I see. Hopefully yeah. that made sense to people who don't get it. Uh... It's a very technical explanation, but it's basically, it's a way of option selecting against gaps. Yeah. It dies, since it's a Kara cancel on the second frame, it dies to one frame frame traps. That's the yeah. counterplay to it. Um, so that, that's Navy Pressure. Navy Pressure is nice. It's just, it's a good overhead that calls people out who are looking too intensely for a specific individual tell. Um, Nine doesn't really have strike throw mix. She can't really ever throw you with one exception and it's the most telegraphed thing of all time. So it's just not really going to happen in Pressure. So she has other things to worry about instead to make up for it and navy pressure is one of them um next spell we'll probably talk about uh, i'm gonna set the bot to block everything this one navy not navy pressure crimson raider why is this minus two this is minus two i'm i'm not gonna tell you too much about it you don't need to know too much about it the facts are it's minus two Barrying it pushes Nine out further in, into closer to her preferred range and makes you more minus. Or no, ma makes her closer to plus, rather. Um, and just the minus one, right? Yeah, minus one. Um, which means that Nine's six frame here is probably going to be whatever you're trying to do. So barrying it, bad idea. Instant barrying it, a little better because you might have a chance to escape somehow. Um, instant blocking it, the best thing you could possibly do. Um somewhat difficult to instant block it since it is yes. two hits and it doesn't have hit stop on the first hit so the timing's a bit weird yeah unlike most other two hit moves you don't get the hit stop on the first hit to help you there is like, actually hit stop technically there, there is hit stop right but it's one-sided so it doesn't really give you the extra time to yeah realize to anyway yeah yeah um, Instant block it is very good, but it's hard to do. There's another thing that Dingo brought up. I'm very glad he did. Uh, TK Crimson. So Crimson Raider behaves like this. Very simple. But in the air, watch how it behaves. Nine pops up a bit. Now, what is your 
instant reaction to seeing this. It's like, oh, I need to take my turn. 2A, 2A, 2A. <laughs> so then 9 does this. Oh, you didn't see that she TK'd it. Now she popped up in the air over your 2A and takes her turn. You really need to try and 5A her. <laughs> you need to be able to do something that's going to hit her at this height. <laughs> Carried character. Yay. So true. Um, It's very strong. It's very strong. She can also do some really, really fucked up shit that I'm not very good at because it's not very good. Where she can, like, cross up hit. It's very, very hard to do and it leads to nothing without set play or maybe even... Oh, I don't think even Rapid will do it. But she can, like, do it over your head. Um, Another thing as well. Uh, This is Nine's only forward advancing attack. And Nine gets pushed out quite a bit. Like, let me just do three hits into Rock. I'm quite far now. My 5C doesn't even reach. My 5B will only just, but I don't even get a combo off that. So, what 9s tend to do... That. Uh, you Crimson Raider, and then Rapid Cancel. But it's also quite a stressful situation to Crimson Rapid, because you could do Low, you could do Throw, you could do Rising Overhead, you could do Kunzite if you have that built. You could do a lot of things. And so, Crimson Raider Rapid is quite common to see. You probably want to keep that in mind ready. Just mentally ready for something to happen after Raider. Um, Raider in general is very good. Crimson Raider is really nice. Um, this character very much likes to have it. Uh, then her other two. Uh, so, <laughs> Nine has what I referred to earlier as a back pocket. She has a Kunzite here, but imagine I build Kunzite, but my opponent bursts me, right? So now I'm over here. Well, having Kunzite in my front pocket, like, I can still drop it whenever I want to, and it'll it'll help me a bit in neutral, like, up here. But what if I want to save this for later? Uh, so Nine has, uh, her, well, it's called CMOS Gate, but everyone just calls it Stock Swap. Well, you just put it in your back pocket. There it is. And now, if I try to cast, I've got nothing. But then if I swap back into Kunzite, rock. So, she has the ability to save her spells for later. Um, this is kind of where, like, if you're playing as 9, this is where the intermediate and advanced players are separated. Um, the ability to use stock swap effectively. It's very, very, very strong. <laughs> um, because she can do stuff like this. Where, just out of nowhere, rock. Uh, she can also prey on people who know to expect rock, right? People, you might ask, why not just immediately block high after three hits because then i can just block the overhead right well no because nine can do fire water fire and then swap and then do a low and she can continue building a kunzite that way so i'll show a fast example there that um you see the first three hits you as uh, someone who knows a bit about nine is like oh I will now stand block the Kunzite. And then she stock swaps into then doing 3C. And she gets, honestly, quite a nice damage combo. If and... it's empty, what, you end up stand blocking. Because you're, if you're looking... If you're going by the Telegraph example we gave earlier, where you look at the stock to see it vanish, you react to it vanishing and stand up and then die. Exactly, yeah. Um, so it's... It's kind of what gives her mix-up the last little bit of oomph she needs to actually have some kind of threatening mix-up. Um, without it, this character would be the easiest character in the game to block. Like, bar, I guess, Amane, if you want to be technical. Um, now, let's talk about her, uh, <laughs> her last special. Nine has a DP, meterless, kind of. Um, it is the slowest DP in the game, question mark? Is, uh, I think there might be a slower one. It's only I think it's a, I, I, no, but it, it's very I think, slow. I think, I think it's the slowest um, meterless. What is there a slower meter DP? Uh, probably. I haven't checked. Either way, this shit is mad slow. But because it's so slow, that tends to like muck people up a lot. Um, on top of that, it's so incredibly slow. Uh, but. It, like, it's essentially safe on block. It's, like, what, minus four? It is safe on block. It's minus yeah, four. It's minus four. So you need to IB it to punish her, and then you'll only get a jab. You can do the ODOS, but a different ODOS where you, like... It's... 
I, I can explain it quickly. Yeah, go for you it. do a jab, you then buff a 2B, and during the startup of that 2B, if, this is on block, you press overdrive. So on block, nothing comes out, you just get 2A, 2B. But um, if they DP'd 3 or 2A, you recover and get overdrive, and so you get to get a full overdrive punish of the DP. Uh, the problem is with this doing this option select is it's only relevant on then wake up, which is possibly the worst time to do DPs in general because it's the most predictable time. Yeah. Generally, you should be doing DP like this is for any character, not just nine. You should be doing DPs during your opponent's pressure gaps rather than immediately on wake up because that's the time when it is most difficult to actually sort of just option select against them. Um, yeah. So. You, you can do that option select, but if your op opposing 9 is smart, they are probably not just going like, well, I got knocked down, time to DP. Yep, so this... And yes, uh, Moon brings up another good point. If they delay tick, basically, if you mistime your jab, either because you fucked up or because they changed the timing uh, of their tick, uh, you will lose your resource. You'll, you'll get an overdrive in their face, and then it's RPS time. Yep. Um, so her DP, uh, size-wise, it's not too bad. Actually, I don't think this is the hitbox of her DP. I think it is actually tiny, a bit smaller than this. I'm not sure what I'm looking at here. I wouldn't be surprised. What? No, that, that, oh! That's the hitbox. <laughs> what? So, uh, thoughts, thoughts on oh. this freeze frame? <laughs> what have you done? Oh. I just <laughs> froze the game at this moment with the hitbox viewer on. Hey, we got it again! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is the size of Nine's DP, that blue circle just there. Um, <laughs> no, that's not actually the size that's, of Nine's That's not DP. it, that's not it. Um, it's the red hitbox. Okay, it is the red one, yeah. So it's it's a couple boxes around each other. Um, it, it, if you've ever had not, nacho cheese-flavored shapes, if, if you not. Aussies have ever had nacho cheese-flavored shapes, it's the same shape as that. <laughs> I've absolutely just ruined someone's day by pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs> it is also a projectile DP. It is a projectile DP. So if you have something that can stop that, uh, <coughs> feel free. But just make sure you have less recovery than nine does. Um, it's quite a strong DP, but I'm glad we chose Hutch as a host because he never gets distracted. Nice. <laughs> uh, so. What else is there to mention? It does, it's called Flax Nurture, and it also gives her a buff. So as her normals you, now have chip damage. Her My normals God. do chip damage, and the average combo goes from like 3,000 to 3.15. It's instead. like 10% extra damage on the normals of the matching type, I think? Yes. Yes. Something like that. Uh, it's, it's not it's very, very, very tiny. It's not tiny. very good. Uh, Sorry, 20%. Oh, she's and they cracked. Do, yeah. yeah, no, it's nothing. It's literally Wait, nothing. it gives spells better paration values as well? Damn. And it's still not worth it. <laughs> it's a DP. You don't use it. It's a DP, yeah. For the for the damage buff. Um, There's no point. I guess I could talk about her overdrive, where if she casts a spell, whatever the prevalent element was is, she I does an think... automatic buff. I mean, I think that you can very quickly mention that. It's yeah. just like, I well, mean, her overdrive now also she can gives her spells on whiff. So, she, as long as she has overdrive, she can just keep pumping out amethysts. <laughs> it's yeah, the amethyst the factory. Tool. You get to actually play neutral versus a character who's like going full screen against you. No, basically. you still you still don't get to. Like, well, you get to play more neutral. It's even then, like New just chucks one sword and it's like, ah, oh, now I have to block. Like, it's not enough. But yeah, all right. Um, I think Look, we've you covered. Just, like, absorb the sword with your fireball. I with your fire grab. Very hard to do. <laughs> um, I think we're done there. So now we're going to start talking about some setups. Um, this is the meat and bones. It it only took an hour and a half to get here. <laughs> Sheesh! All right, let's talk about some setups. The most basic one. Will we get to questions before two hours? Probably not. We've got what twenty-two minutes to get to those. All right, this is th this right here. Um, this is the basic one, right? Ragnar attacks Three immediately. Very. So, what that does is it just sets the fairy up after a knockdown. Pretty simple. Now let me uh, disabled crouching. So. Uh, let me show you an introductory example of what Nine is going to do if you instantly tech fairy. Instant overhead. That then leads to the same situation again. 
Now this could all be avoided if the Ragnar just didn't tech immediately. A delay tech throws everything out of balance. Uh, what is it again? It's like wake up, disabled. Uh, wake up. Emergency roll you disabled. See, you see emergency, emergency roll. roll disabled at, okay. and leave wake up on normal, on enabled. Neutral, yeah. Disable yeah. emergency roll, yeah. There you go. Uh, we haven't actually looked at the variable wake up timings on improvement mod in a while, have I? So as you can see, I just tried to do the same thing again, but I couldn't really get the setup going. Oh, I just stuffed that one up. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Now that right there, did anyone spot the difference? I actually got it to work, but did anyone spot the difference? No one did. I'm, I, I just realized no one's going to have spotted the difference. And I'm also like Dora the Explorer talking to an audience that isn't there. They can't actually talk back. I mean, I guess you guys we, can. It's it's difficult to tell yeah. what the difference is. Um, but the, the difference was I had to change my setup uh, with a different button. Uh, or a less button to be exact. Um... Nine can still get her setups to work, but she has to be aware of your tech timing and deal with it accordingly. Now, what you can do is just stay on the ground for a really long time and then tech barely before Fairy hits you. Nine has to... Uh, there's one way Nine can realistically catch that without throwing her life away, which is 4B, um, because that hits quite far forwards on the ground, so it catches people delay teching. But if she tries to do that... Um, and you tech, then she's not in position for the optimal setups and then has to kind of create a setup on the fly. Don't get me wrong. Nine can still count fairy hits like a normal person and then just do a rising overhead between two hits. And that will be enough. But she doesn't get any of the really degenerate setups that she's known for that can lead to utter death. So, if you want to take notes, this is the first one you should take. Always delay tech against fairy. Always delay tech against fairy. All right. Alter tech, suicide. Exactly right. Well, not suicide, but you are just making life way harder for yourself when you just don't need to. Um, next point. Uh, the next kind of set play she can do involves fire rain. Now, can anyone guess what went wrong there? Uh, you blocked it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, true. Um, no, what happened there is the Ragnar is, he, he's a pretty good Blaze Blue player. He's like, all right, so this, this fairy thing is really strong, but I completely throw it off, make it way harder to use for the nine if I just, excuse me, delay tech. So I should delay tech all her spells. And you no. just became free. <laughs> you are now free. <laughs> um, the, it's okay. What Nine does is she sets up Fire Rain. What she then does... Is wait a second. Oh, you are not teching immediately. Guess what? I get to build Seed while you're just sitting there and blocking. And now, this is not a true unblockable timing, as you can see. But, even if you know exactly what to do, you are not going to be blocking this reliably. <laughs> it is very hard to block consistently. Even people that I fought who know what the setup is and how it works, they still get hit by it because it's really hard to change block that quickly, sometimes as a matter of a frame or two. And... If the nine does a certain uh, route that's really hard, she can end off further away, which creates the perfect timing to create a real unblockable. All of this can be avoided by not ever delay teching fire rain. Never delay tech fire rain. <laughs> ever. There is no reason. You, I cannot think of a single one. Do not delay tech. Now let me just show what happens. Hold on, wait, I need to do it again. Alright, so, this is what happens if you don't delay tech. I'm gonna do the same thing I did. And then I keep thinking to myself what I'm going to do, and then I stop doing it. I'm getting distracted in my combos, help! I had, okay, I had a frame drop. Yeah, we're getting the, uh, unscripted guide drop True. combo section. I was gonna get it that time. Alright, here we go, watch. You can jump here. 
And it's no longer an unblockable, because if you jump here, you are in the air, and the seed cannot hit you low. You can, mm. you can, you can jump and barrier. Also, something I got brought up, mm -hmm. not to interrupt yeah. your advice, which is the critical part. Yeah. A hackman drives just ignoring unblockables. It's basically a DP, right? Yeah. Uh, if you if you just hackman drive on wake up, then sure you get to parry it, but you're just playing the same RPS everyone else is with DP. Yeah. Uh, if you block, you just get put into the block string, and you can't hack them and parry out of out of blocks done unfortunately unless there's a gap i don't believe there is no there's not a gap uh, there's no gap um unless you tech immediately and then there is a we gap. have another question yeah uh quick get up as an option versus fairy meteors how does it uh, perform uh varies um nine can pretty effortlessly check that but it does set her back a little bit in terms of setups um Something nine does that catches everything, but makes her setups a lot weaker, is four B. Um, four B, especially off shorter combos, it'll catch basically everything if timed right. But she doesn't get to do like the really degenerate stuff. Um, you kind of brought that up earlier, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did, but like it, 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 for a different reason. But four B does like covers the same thing. Um, quick get up is a good thing to try, especially if nine doesn't end with Oki. Um, I think does if. It just bring, bringing you back on topic. Yeah. Uh, so how does how does it deal with um? So you do three C fire rain right, and they yeah. just sit on the ground and quick uh, tick. Does that ju uh, does it still work there, or is it? I I, I I need to not four B immediately. Um, otherwise it'll okay. blue beat. But um, a slight delay. Like generally the way nines do it is they get the knockdown and then they do a micro walk four B like this. Right. Um, and yeah. that... so generally it is a, it is not a good idea to quick tick versus uh, meteors at all because you're still going on the ground and giving them a uh, time since it's a emergency tickable knockdown. If you I... want to quick, you want to emergency tick. Always. Uh, Uxie asks quite the question: What happens if Nine just uses Fire Rain for pressure into something like Rock Reset? If Nine is deploying Fire Rain, you, you definitely you, okay. If she's close enough, smack her. Um, oh, ah, okay, what if she tries to use it for pressure without the unblockable? Um, so, she can, at the very start of the activation, do a rising J2A. If she doesn't do it immediately, or pretty much immediately, then she won't be able to confirm off of it. So you will get hit by a rising J2A, but she won't get a combo off of it unless it happens immediately. Um, otherwise, just block as normal. Uh, like, if you emergency tech, it's not like it's a free out, no. Um, it's not a free out, no, but it means that she's not going to be able to do too much. Um, in essence, Nine has to pick between a few things. Um, she has to choose between wanting to try and set up the hard to blockable because you delay teched. Um, or she has to try and, you know, uh, like, get her setup ready you jumping well no what or... she needs to do then is because you okay if you take immediately uh, against fire rain nine has to then do a block string to keep you blocking right um but she needs to do four buttons not three um and three buttons is how many it takes to build a spell four buttons you can build a spell as well but the fourth button adds an extra duration on total frames consumed by nine so that fire rain will have already ended by the time she can actually deploy a seed right so hold on I'm, I'm distracting myself so in that scenario um when you tech immediately nine's trying to force there to not be a gap and to do that she presses four buttons but if there's no gap she can't then go into a rising j2a and combo after she'll probably hit you and then one fire rain hit will hit you but she won't be able to keep going um, so if you tech immediately, then nine has to try and stop you from jumping out. So if she does that, she does four buttons. In that case, then you need to guess if she's going to do a rising J2A or 2A, but either way, you're still going to be blocking after that. If she does three buttons, there is a gap somewhere. Three buttons into seed while firing is out. There is a gap somewhere. Probably she after this seed cast, right? Generally. But nine players can prey on people who are like, okay, just wait for after the seat, and then they stand there for like 15 to 20 frames and then start pressing the buttons, and you just mm. got pranked. <laughs> um, what do you do about that? Guess. I'm sorry. 
guess this character is actually good, she's going to make I you mean, guess. <laughs> guessing is basically a thing that happens with every character, to be yeah. fair. Like, oh, uh, Ragnar's doing pressure on me. Uh, how do I get out of the plus frames? Well, sometimes you just need to guess. They can just choose an option that isn't reactable that will beat the specific thing you did. To, the only way to avoid a guaranteed unblockable is to not get hit in the first place, because a guaranteed unblockable is exactly that, guaranteed, um, because Nine has it in her back pocket. Every other setup beyond that, it is never guaranteed. There's always something you can do to stop it, but how you stop it does vary based on a lot of different factors. Um, generally, the distance that Nine is and how long she has before Fire Rain activates. Those are usually the limiting factors. Um, if Nine is just spamming Fire Rain... Uh, another thing Nine can do, right? Let me let me show you the most fearsome pressure of all. Before we get sidetracked with the fearsome pressure, if yeah. you... I think we've kind of forgotten all of the questions we've been asked. Hopefully we have successfully answered all of them, but if you think your question hasn't been answered, please repeat it and I'll get in touch to... To talk exactly, about it. yeah. Right, you can just loop fairy Specifically and fire regarding rain. the uh, fire rain setups. Reset nine knowledge. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll play, play. Like, I, the way I'm going to conclude this discussion is please just ask me for games if you want them. Ask me questions if you have them. Learn to play against this character. She's not that bad. All right, we're going to kind of skim along a little bit to try and keep this under two hours. Um, yes, Dingo, but I didn't feel like playing yesterday. Cope about it. Um, so. The next setup, all right, this one I use a lot. I think there is one person I have ever fought who has blocked it exactly one time. It feels like if I ever just decide, oh, I need to actually, like, get a hit is in real quick. Is this the fairy cross-up in the corner? No. Or is this a different one? So this, that right there, that is a common ender for nine, right? Hold on, so what she does is she builds Kunzai, knocks you into the air. Oh, I can't do that route on Ragnar, I forgot about that. Okay. Unscripted guide moment. So, I'm going to complain real quick about Nine's uh, shawl ender in the air. It's actually the most inconsistent thing. I found a way to get it to work on net play, but it's fucking annoying. Anyway, basically what happens, right, is Nine gets you in the air, she builds seed, swaps to back pocket, swaps back, teleports forwards, and does this JA. People block this JA. People block this JA. But you know what they don't block? The Kunzai I just built. This is not even Oki. This is this is nothing. But everybody gets hit by this. I think Moon has blocked it once. And I think someone else that I didn't expect was able to block it like more than once. Uh Moon, I'll I'll try and demonstrate it again, Moon. Uh, Hutch is just saying that you're the only person who's blocked this once. That, where I do the falling JA into Kunzite after the empty JD ender. Um, it's like, you've, like, Moon has blocked that once, and that is better than almost everyone else on the planet. Like, it's actually the freest thing ever, and I don't understand why it works. There must be something about it. Maybe it's low to the ground JA into an overhead that people don't expect. But it works every time. Stop getting hit. Just stop. Just stop. <laughs> um, uh, next one. Um, so, Nine has safe will, jump. Oh, yeah? Well, I will just interject with uh, Dingo is asking for confirmation. To sum up, Fire Rain equals only delay tick and watch three to what? four spells of three... He's, he's got... Wait, maybe no, no, you no. should read this. Okay. Yeah, I'm reading it now. Fire Rain, never delay tech. Um, so, never delay tech versus Fire Rain because she can build a Kunzai and then you... Not Kunzai. Um, uh, a seed and then you're forced to uh, block a hard to blockable. Sometimes an unblockable depending on what she already has available and spacing. Um, if you delay tech, then you're going to need to use something. <laughs> right? It'd be that counter assault, overdrive, DP, you're gonna need to do something if you did delay tech by accident. Against fairy, always delay tech. Um, nine can also do, uh, as a common ender, she can do this. Are we moving on to the safe jump stuff? Or... Uh, not just yet. I'm gonna show another strange ender that nine has, where she does this. Um, just quick, 
Crimson Raider instead of Deploy Fairy. What she can do then is delay a little bit in response to your delay tech and then deploy fairy and if she times it right she does get to keep her degenerate setups but that does require a bit of a guessing game between both players but yeah she can just do crimson raider fairy deploy but that's easily disrespected i'm just going to point it out because it's like a quick and easy thing to point out um don't delay tech after crimson raider ender if you can help it or at least do something of note do something of note um so to some Fairy, so 3C Fairy, you should delay tick. 3C Fire Rain, you should never delay tick. Correct. And Crimson Raider, uh, sorry, 3C Crimson Raider, you should never delay tick. Uh, well, not never, but... Ideally, don't delay tech, right? This, that one's less strict, but yeah, don't delay tech if you can help it. Okay, um, cool. Safe jumps now, I guess. Yep, yeah, so safe jumps. Um, Nine has a few safe jumps. Um, One really degenerate one is really hard to show off because you can't easily show it without actually being in a game but what she does is if she does low to the ground freeze like this right what she does is then immediately does stock swap why it doesn't matter she's swapping nothing into nothing but that stock swap creates the perfect amount of time for her to then do falling ja and then block whatever comes after the freeze um it's really hard to demonstrate i mean uh the latest improvement mod version has uh, reversal actions, but I don't think we should deal with that because yeah. it is actually quite jank. Um, so, yeah. That right there. So this combos because it's been a long combo and also because of my height. But there's like a very certain height she can do that where it does safe jump. I'm going to be honest with you. I personally don't go for that safe jump very often because I don't feel like it's necessary. I've never been in a situation where it's like, oh man, I really wish I was doing this safe jump instead of getting fairy oki outside of dp range like why, why would i not just pick being outside of dp range with fairy oki right um but that is a safe jump she can do i'll just point it out for uh clarity's sake if you're if you're seeing her do this um a couple things are gonna happen oh we're gonna have to talk about that in a second all right safe jumps though um this one is a safe jump this right here so what that is what to look out for in the corner, or close to corner, she builds seed with wind, fire, fire, stop, swaps it to her back pocket, then presses JD for shawl, then swaps back and does a falling button. That right there is a safe jump against every DP in the game as far as I'm aware. I don't think there is a DP that isn't safe jump. Have you tried it verse, is an, um, uh, versus Noel's DP? What's the fastest character you've tried it against uh, i Izanami? tried it against is an army and it worked okay so the only character with a faster dp than that is noel so uh okay. if it works on noel then it would work on everyone okay well i'll, I'll go test that another time but that safe jump uh it, if, if you're that important if your right character now. isn't noel then you definitely get fucked by that um she also has another one that i personally am toying around with a little bit at the moment which is fire rain uh it's basically, you're doing a falling... It's, it's like a more st a standard safe jump, where you do a falling button into a buffered button. Uh, but in Nine's case, the buffered button is 4B. Um, what this does is it actually creates seed for a hard-to-blockable off of Fire Rain. It, you can roll out of the corner against that one, but you will still have to block... But Nine won't be able to create the hard to blockable. But she will be able to recognize it and side swap back into the corner and start pressure. So what's go what's that what that eh, what that will look like is Nine is going to land here, you're gonna be blocking like this, and then Nine will side swap and you'll be blocking like this instead. Um that's what's going to happen if you roll out of the corner. It does mean that the hard to blockable is probably gone, but she is going to instead have a level three spell and pushing you back into the corner. Um so rolling is probably a good idea against the fire rain deploy in the air. Um, oh, we need to talk about things you are really not allowed to do. How do I make the roll, the bot roll, emergency roll, disabled, uh, wake yeah, up, disabled forwards? That, and then wake up forwards. Would okay. Be I need to show Crimson Raider Ender in the air and why you should absolutely not roll. That right there. Do not roll out. Even though Nine's like in the skybox, please do not roll. 
<laughs> when she does raid her and especially in the corner. <laughs> um, that's free for her. You just need to tech immediately. There you go. Just showing for consistency. That one there, because I can show it so easily without dropping it even once, you know that that is easy as fuck, right? <laughs> like, Raider Ender, please do not roll. Um, even delay roll just won't work. Um, so, the last one that I think I really need to talk about is, uh, for now, is Freeze. <laughs> Just before you get into freeze, yeah. this is, is this the last setup you're talking about? Do we have any other topics, or um, are we going to go, go on to questions after? We'll this? probably go on to questions, but well, I'm going to give myself like two minutes while I'm demonstrating this next thing to think like, is there anything else that's like kind of strange that I do that I could point out? Um, okay. Well, uh, sure. I mean, there's no that's that's off of freeze. Um, yeah, freeze really is just like the main offender, right? That's the one people are scared of. Um, so there's this, right? Now from here. The simple one is falling JA, 5A, then 3C into Fairy. That's the basic one. Nine can then alter that if she wants to further ah, by doing the same thing, but pay attention to how many water hits I do. Way more. And as a result, I'm a lot further out now, which means I'm differently spaced. Depending on the character, that could be better, that could be worse. But I'm spaced out further. Does this matter much? Not really, but it's just good to know what I'm looking for as the defender. Um, so this is up close, whereas extra button or two leaves me further out. With guard point Having an extra there. button or two is nice because it means like uh, you'll be further away from, say, Ragnar, whose DP is fairly long range. Yeah, like, if, if I'm at this range, I'm pretty sure Ragnar would barely hit me if I'm standing. But if I add the extra buttons, I'm over here now, he's not hitting me. He's just mm. not hitting me. Um, but, to do that, I did Falling JA. Now watch this. Notice there, it was not Fairy, because I did Falling JC. I'll show you the more common one, however. I just did the one that I just... Anyway. You expected fairy, and suddenly I'm dropping a rock on your head. <laughs> while you're standing. The freeze restand, classic. The freeze you restand. Need... Now, we're going we're gonna to play a fun game. See, see that fire on the ground? Is that 2C or 3C lag? That is 100% 2C. Correct! Because 2C does not knock down, it leaves you standing. So if you see 2C, something's up. <laughs> something's up. 9 is trying to mix you here. She can do 2C into either Rock or Delayed 3C to try mix Exactly. You and both, in that combo, both are going to start a new combo. They're not going to chain into the other. Yeah. Um, now, the telegraph that something fishy was going on was the Falling JC. Because that was required to build the Rock. But what other nines won't tell you is that you could do this. I did falling JC, but there's Fairy Oki anyway. Um, she can just do falling JC, but build into Fairy regardless. But here's a secret: if she does, who cares? Because she's going into Fairy, and you're going to have time to react to that anyway. So if you see falling JC, you need to like. I don't know if anyone has seen the newest um the Spider Verse film. With the, you know, you know the, well, who's that guy, Miguel O'Hara? And every time he's on screen, that like really menacing chord plays. If you see Nine do Falling JC, you need to play that menacing chord in your head because something's going on. Something's going on, and you need to be awake and ready for it. It's probably going to be a Kunzai reset. Um, but then we have further layers to really fake you out, which is going to look like this. So, she threatened the standing reset with Kunzite, and then swapped it out into 3C. <laughs> you can also just not swap it out and do 3C. That is true. but You can do both. But the fact that she's like goes back up to standing makes people flinch at the rock. And so, yeah. there's There are a few things that Nine can do there. And at this point, right, she's just trying to make you flinch and make you think about the wrong things at the wrong time. The frame data has not changed. She's just making you think more. Mental stack, if you will. Um, I'm trying to think if there's much else to talk if about. If you're familiar with Jen, yes, you can, just okay, so, stuff. Um, I think it was correct. You can ODOS if she's trying to do this stuff. So 
if you are getting hit there into the freeze, you can hold the button down and mash your um, yep. OD, and you will... ODOS will also prevent burst, so yes, you can do yep. it to deal with freeze restand fix up. Unless 9 somehow manages to time it to be one frame, but uh, I think that's unlikely. No, I, I don't think you can. Uh, the other thing is 9 does not have a way to tick throw, so she won't be able to punish the ODOS easily. Yeah. ODOS uh, has another downside where it will cause you to TRM depending on how you're doing it, or you'll be very easy to throw because you're holding down C or B. But, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, and... Like, Can we move on to questions? Or? I, I guess I just want to... No, no, you're fine. I just want to bookend by saying, like, everything I've shown you is the common stuff, but nine players, just by virtue of playing the character and being knowledgeable on her, they will just do stuff completely out of the blue that doesn't make sense or is not what I've mentioned here, which is usually just stuff that's not as good, but it's stuff that is used... Not doing things that aren't as good is often fine if yeah. your opponent is familiar with them. Like this is a thing with Mew. I I often do like basically what I'm pretty sure is the best set play the character has. But if you just pick up something that's completely wild and they've never seen it before, you're probably going to get them with it. Yeah. Um. And speaking of, I actually need to talk. Sorry, there is one more setup I need to talk about, which is the Morganite safe jump. The Morganite safe jump is also the most unethical mix up I think Nine has. Um, I just did it then. Let me demonstrate again. I want you to watch what happens after I deploy CD in the air and do do falling J2A. Pay attention to the order of hits. Did anyone catch that? <laughs> You'll have to wait for us yep. to catch up. Uh, double overhead. So you did overhead un to an unblockable? Or is that ov double overhead then low low? Overhead, low, overhead really fast oh that's so it's the reverse hard to blockable instead of low high it's high low high ow yes it's high low high all really quickly but at, but she can decide instead of jumping to the second you, instant overhead do a two way land into another low yes that's probably her best mix-up I honestly think that's her best mix-up. Does the uh, seed catch the roll? Oh, catch rolls there. I assume it does. Yes, it does. It, uh, it does, but it's a m not the easiest combo. Um... All right, <laughs> roll out there to make nines drop that combo. Uh, let me. Oh, hold on. Wait, where is it? Uh, disabled forwards. Wait, I just messed it up. Doing a thing is easy. Doing a thing when people are watching, not easy. It's so oh, true. <laughs> He's just like me for real. <laughs> there we go. So, how that works is 9 has to land immediately and do 4x, and that will barely catch the roll. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if you're S. Are you sure that's catching the roll? It is, yes. Uh, well, the thing is, like, rolls have a window at the end where you can actually block during the recovery, and if you haven't set them to block oh, okay. everything, they will actually uh, just not block it. It's a it's a quirk of how the thing is. Um, yeah, it's quite awkward. Oh, there we go. Do. I can also just do that setup. Yeah, never mind. So there's just a different version of that that'll catch everything regardless. Oh, you, okay. You can just do the better setup, lol. <laughs> um, there you go. Okay, shall we move on to questions? Um, I think that's about it. I will say, if you see anything that I do in a game ever, please ask me and I will break it down as best I can. Um, oh, wait. Maybe I want to... I feel like Dingo's going to ask about this, so maybe I don't need to talk about it. No, I'll, I'll talk about well, it another if, time. If it's Ding neutral. If Dingo asks about it... Um, I was just going to talk well, about neutral a bit more. But okay, well, I, we'll, we'll go yeah. on to questions. Then, okay. Right? All right. Questions, sir. Okay. I, well, do you want me to go through the ones that were written down first? I, w I didn't write them down in order well, of the one. I, I, I can do that now. Well, okay. Um, so, so, how should Crimson Raider be dealt with? Asked by our dear viewer, Moon. Um, I kind of already covered that, but basically you need to instant block it. But, but, but the more frames you add on to yourself, the worse this is for you. But IBB is not a bad idea, because it does give you a chance to kind of get out of there a bit. Um, normal blocking is an alright idea, you just need to be personally familiar with the fact that it's got really weird hit stops, so you need to know 
where that's going to be. God damn it, my music stopped again because I talked too much. Um, you need to know what the hit stop's like so you can press a button. I am minus two, but it's an ambiguous minus two. So know when to mash. Otherwise, give yourself more frames. Instant block is going to help immensely. Um, uh, let me think here. Uh, we were asking about... You want me to read this, off my list? Right? Or... Yeah, well, hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll go to your list in a second. I just want to finish these ones. So we're asking about short. I've, I've now. included everything in from either from the Discord as well in okay. my list. You want me to go through it? Well, I mean, I'll just finish this and then you can tick them off as they go. I, I, I thumbs up reacted. I want to, I want to go through and read them so they know that I'm reading them. It's like a, it's like a, an immersion thing, you know. Um, so how should nine be using this and how should you deal with it? Uh, with you mean short? the. Right? Yeah, re uh, regarding f 9 5D, I think we actually talked about that we did. earlier. Um, so, but I'll give it. But it's, it's mostly like the. 9 should be using it while jumping, like, like yes. you're demonstrating right now, and you should try. To, if you're predicting it, you should try punish it by low profiling it and then going under and hitting it. Exactly. Yeah. It is re in recovery to landing. See, look at this. I, I cannot hit the Ragnar. So just crouch it and then hit her. Um, if you hit me fast enough, it is counter hit, of course. Um, then there was, like, no real good questions after that, because people were well, I'll, I'll read off my list. Hold on, hold on, no, 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 there's, like, uh, how do I stop 9 from dashing forward for free? Okay, so, um, we talked about that before as well. Um, you need to, okay, from here, if she's dashing forward from here, there's not much you can do, friend. I'm sorry, there's not much you can do. Um, she's just allowed to walk forwards or dash forwards or run forwards like everyone else. But, if you're concerned about her being maybe this close... And dashing forwards, that's where you got to start filling hitboxes in where she's going to end up. You need to position yourself so you can 5A or 2A or 5B or whatever, uh, right where she's going to end up. That can require mobility. If you do not have that mobility, that's rough, buddy. <laughs> I love I love how this question comes has been from asked a Tega by player. a Tega player. Yes. How do I stop nine from dashing for free? To stop being Taker is the yeah, answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, against Nine, honestly, uh, Shay can probably give you like the rundown. I could probably give you a bit of a rundown as well. But there is a lot you could do against Nine as Taker. Um, if we want to give Shake a platform, we could invite him to the call and get him to talk we, about we, it. If we, he wants we, to give an, I, an answer, I, I, yeah, I was gonna great. say we should probably uh, leave that for the end. But I'm definitely down for that if if Shake is free at that time. <laughs> Let um, us, if you want to get in and talk about uh, the Tega matchup specifically, Shake, uh, just let us know and we'll get you in here. Yeah. Um, is it even possible to punish Navy pressure or you just have to hold it? <laughs> uh, it depends on the range. Um, if you're asking about Navy pressure spam, uh, you just need to block it once and then run at her. This is asked by a Tega <laughs> player again. <laughs> uh, for Tega, you will just need to be walking forwards. Or sledge, I guess. B sledge, I think it is. If you're close enough, you can A or B uh, sledge. If you're a bit further out, you could B sledge. Um, but it, those are both predictive. Uh, so not the greatest options. Yes, yeah. sorry. Uh, but you can do them. Someone in chat, Seldom Ray, has said, IADJA at a range where A buttons will whiff, they'd need to commit to an anti-air which can lose to second step, right? So if 9's over here, and I do a teleport forwards, pretend you're standing up for a second. Um, that hits you, right? That you as the Ragnar here get hit, mm. or have to block it at least, and your J, uh, your 5A is certainly not hitting. So they can low profile under it with something like 2A. This is yes. character specific, obviously, uh, but you don't have to commit to anti airs that will lose to the second step. You can do something like go under 2A. Yeah, um, low profile is how you deal with that. Yes, as well. But 5Aing it or 2Aing it, um, 2A is. Uh, 5A especially, at ranges where that would whiff, you would then need to go for like a larger button, like an anti-air. But then you're going to be an anti-air recovery when 9 does teleport up, if she does that. So, in those cases, a lot of people will be like, oh, but I pressed 5A, or I couldn't 5 You need to position so carefully against 9. You need to be in the exact right position. This, this is how quickly 9 can reposition herself. Like, this walking right here. This is how quickly she can reposition herself without jumping, i.e. giving away an action, or teleporting, putting herself in recovery slash count hit recovery, depending on how many teleports, right? Her movement is some of the most committal in the game. Maybe the most committal? Does...
Does anyone else? Like, maybe Bullet? Mm. Nah, Bullet has, uh... Oh, Bullet I can, mean... like, do JD and Bullet stuff. Bullet can dash stuff. jump her, yeah. her dash yeah. as well. Okay, so Nine might have the most committal movement in the game. Arakune it... is probably also... No, wait, Arakune can uh, barrier cancel his yeah. dash. No. Valk, no, he can, like, wolf Val back dash a yeah. bunch of stuff. <laughs> Ow, lol. No, uh, no, Hazama, no. no. <laughs> yeah. Azrael has faster teleport movement, and he can also jump cancel his teleport. Uh, no, Blue Bullet can actually dash jump. Um, yeah, Bullet can dash it's jump. Just, it's just that it's really hard to do, because you have to time the jump, like, right as the dash starts. It's very early on. Yeah. So, yeah. Nine is very committal if she's not walking. So you want to use that to your advantage. Um, super jump JA, or just super jump in general, again, is really good, right? If you're not sure what Nine's doing, and you're like, ah, she's dashing at me, she's teleporting, what do I do? Super jumping away is a really good problem. <laughs> a really good problem, a really good solution to a really annoying problem. Assuming you don't need to actually get in to kill her. If she has the health lead, then it's sort of like, it's just delaying the loss. That is, Which is true, a bit awkward. but Nine it, can't it, always... Running away is things. really the only solution if you are a character who can set up at full screen and force her to start being exactly, more aggressive. Yeah. Or if you have the health lead and you need she needs to come to you anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, for example, Mew is one of the characters who can set up at full screen and force uh, Nine to come in and having the health lead while you need to be winning in the first place. Yeah, which is um, potentially hard depending on how strong the nine is. Oh right, there was a question Render asked, which I don't think Render got the point was just to learn about nine. He's like, hey, should I play Carl or Rachel? But I chose to like interpret that as like which one is better into nine. Um, uh, it's it's Rachel. It's Rachel very freely. <laughs> nine actually gets to play against Carl. She uh, Carl is like the only top tier that Nine is like feeling okay about fighting. Um, Rachel is probably her worst matchup. I don't know for sure. I've just heard a lot of people say that. Uh, but yeah, if you're if you're choosing between those two, you definitely want to be playing Rachel. <laughs> uh, okay, that's the end of the questions that have been asked here. Everything. You want to go to mine? Yeah, the ones you've got now. Okay, we have one from Shake and Bake. What's my best option after blocking Jump 2x, depending on what you have stocked for Jump D? Oh god. This is a pretty oh, complicated one, considering is... there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of variables in that question. <laughs> the, okay, so alright, let no, no no this is a good question though. So let's let's talk about this. Alright, if you block this, guess what? It's your turn. It's your turn. Um Nine would have to jump cancel this to not die. This is your turn. Now. Hold on, that's that's too obvious. This, this is not your turn. Hold that shit. <laughs> it is height dependent, right? That does not even matter based on what's in back pocket. That's just how it goes. Um, if... Can you cancel into, like, uh, Kunzite, for example, if you have it available? Uh, yes. So I can have this built, and then I could do that. Um, that is an option. Uh... Okay, okay, so the Shake said stocked, which I had treated to mean back pocket, but I just realized I, means I, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure he meant yeah. uh, what you have in your primary pocket. So it depends on the character. Of A common string I do, actually, uh, for pressure, uh, watch what I'm doing here. This is like a really cheeky one. 5A, 5C, jump, then delay J2C. I now have rock. So I can land and low. I can land or, and jump again, or I can just rock while I'm in the air. And what are most people going to do when they see a button at this height? Gee, I wonder. Block. Maybe they might block low after this connects because, like, there's... Th of course, there's no quick overhead coming. But then, there's the rock, right? <laughs> Good old rock. Always wins. Exactly. Um, Shake, in particular, you are Tega. Uh, ah, you Tega player. Uh, which means not a lot, sir. Uh, you just have to kind of hold that, but you can, if you notice me looping that enough times while you have the read, you just want to hit me out of my jump here before I do J2C, uh, which will involve doing, what is it, Atomic Collider? Is that it? That uh, might be, though. You're thinking of the anti-air grab, right? Yeah. Yes, that's Atomic Collider. I'm not sure if that's or fast maybe enough. maybe 2C. But that, uh, 
I don't think Tegan... Uzi would not work. I don't think it has enough range. 2A is also certainly not working for Tegan, unfortunately. <laughs> I... There, there might be a better option there, but uh, I think, uh... What was it? Shake will have to lab it himself. Uh, yeah. so... I think we've covered that reasonably. Uh, we've got one more question. Yep. Uh, added ju us just now. For swap, jump D, swap. This is regarding the set play earlier. For swap, yep. jump D, swap. Seed, jump B, safe jump. Is it just seed or will any spell safe jump? Uh, any spell... Ooh. Let's find out. Uh, I think I know the answer to this, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll test it live so people know. So All of the any spells spell. have like the same animation, right? Uh, most of them are. Kunzai is yeah. So, they all safe jump, but it's not Seed that's actually safe jumping. Seed is just the part after the safe jump. Mm. Um, well, I think he's just here. His question is regarding, like, do the spells have different animations, really? Uh, Kunzai does. Uh, Kunzai will just. I don't think whiff. you should be using Kunzai there, right? But you will never so... use Kunzai. <laughs> yeah. In that scenario, you're never using Kunzai. Because okay. every, every spell total frame is the same. In that scenario, yes. Um, on ground, it might be different. Um, I would go to Dust Loop if you've got frame data questions for that. Yes. Uh, what was it? Some of them are different. What was it? The cross is like 80 frames, while most of them are 40. It looks like <laughs> the vast majority of them are 40 frames. Uh, apparently, Rock is also 40 frames, so no, you're wrong. It's the same. Oh. So Rock should safe jump, even if it whiffs. Oh, um, sorry, I just thought of a new setup. Sorry, okay, we're, we're doing this out of order now because I wasn't thinking of stuff. So, this right here, oh my god, I catch everyone with this. Oh, hold on, wait. Someone was blocking it well the other day. It might have been Dingo, actually. So if I just do Rock here, or I just do Stuff... Okay, it's going to be really hard to pause and demonstrate this, right? I just did Freeze real early. Guess when you are actionable here. In the air? I don't know. Right, like, as you touch the ground. So if I micro walk forwards properly, I can 3C you. And people get hit by that all the time, right? So I, I do this. That. Um, I usually do it from closer up. Uh, it's hard to explain it. It's usually something like this. Okay, I did that too early. Um, maybe because that was a shorter combo. But if 9 f does 5A and then freezes you right after at this height... You've got a 50-50 coming. Because she can rising J2A if she's close enough, or rising J2B if she's not, though that's not an instant overhead that is reactable. Um, or she's going to do a 3C and then pop you up. Like that. Um, one I quite like doing is this. Uh, no, that's not quite right. Uh, how do I set up into it? It's really hard... <laughs> I actually can't demonstrate this any better than what I did just then. Um, we should probably move on for sake yeah. of time then, unfortunately. Yeah. But, um, so let's let's go to the next question. Or, well, Moon just asked some. Yeah. I'm not sure if you covered this, but when defending against 9, could you cover the situation after you have blocked Kunzite? Alright. Uh... That was asked by Moon. So, it, it's actually entirely range dependent. I'm sorry for the cop-out answer, but, like, here... In general, you've not got much going for you. <laughs> um, but here, you've got a lot more going for you. Um, you could, can I just yeah. interject here with my interpretation of this? It, it just pressure in nine is nine is spending range as a resource. She can basically just continue doing buttons and spells until you get put until you push her far enough away. Yes. So to yeah, if Kunzite is very close, then you're kind of just fucked and you need to live with it. Uh, Moon then asked, uh, tying this into his next question, which was like, can you cover the use of instant barrier block against 9? It, from the sounds of it, it sounds like just using instant barrier block in general, just to create some distance, would be pretty useful versus 9, just to make her unable to pressure you for as long. Alright, this is going to be 5A, 5C, 3C rock. This is my distance when I was kind of close up. Now we're going to use instant barrier. Okay. Outside of 5B range. <laughs> Outside of 6C range. <laughs> That's why you IBB against 9. <laughs> if she does the three buttons necessary to build Kunzite, and then drops Kunzite, that's how far away she is. <laughs> um, 
Now, this is still kind of a form of pressure. Because even though I am not able to I mean, you, you're, here, you're returned to neutral here, but you're at, at an ideal neutral range for now. Yes. Doesn't mean much since your walk is fast. Uh, I mean, it's a good walk, but it still does mean stuff because, like, okay, Dingo, let, let, let's say IBBs, all of that. I, then I mean, you're now in... playing neutral RPS, right? So, like, if you yeah. try to 6C and they just sort of sit there, delay, dash in, and 5B, you, you get punished. It, you're actually playing neutral now rather than uh, what pressure, which is basically always weighted towards the aggressive. I mean, player. okay, so Dingo, I can walk back into range. But, but then if you but walk then, in, they super jump and air dash and they're out. Yes. Or something. Uh, if I walk and then try to 3C, which is like my best long range button that's actually going to lead to any reward whatsoever, um, then... Well, okay, no, it's, 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 it's like micro walk 6C or 3C, with 6C having more range and more reward. Um, so it's like... <laughs> it, it's, it's a bit of a weird one. Um... IBB just gives you more room to breathe and forces the nine to try and figure out how to get back in, right? If if it's just at this range, right? If I'm left at this range after Kunzai, I've got so much more freedom. But if I'm back here, like I'm quite restricted in what I can do, especially if I don't have any spells. If I have Amethyst, then like get an idiot. But uh, there's not a lot I can do from far away. But yeah. Alright, uh, next question. I'm going to actually skip over what your own question. You said I'm going to add a topic of my own, bursting, because I feel like it's going to be a fairly long one. We'll go to a few of the other ones. <laughs> uh, watery Mind, is there an end to suffering? Is so, it, presumably, how do I play against Nine as... As, as Susan? Susano. Um, I think Susano... Asked by a Susan player. I think Susano has a slight advantage in that matchup, truthfully. I just don't think anyone's <laughs> put the effort in. Um... I, I think it's probably hard to tell then, right? Because you're you're very experienced with Susan, you're very experienced with Nine, but you don't have the opportunity to play the matchup on versus someone who is on your level. The so. only person I have who I can discuss this with is Adroth. And Adroth and I were talking about it, and he was like, I don't know, man, I think this is really bad for Susano. And then I explained, well, no. If A, then do B. Like, I, I, I literally just gave him a couple flowcharts for a few situations, including the stuff I've given you guys, like, don't, uh, like, de do delay tech versus fairy, don't delay tech versus fire rain, this is how this works, blah, blah, I just gave him some basic info, not even, not, not even as in-depth as this, and he's like, wait, yeah, never mind, Susano absolutely clowns on her. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, the conclusion is, get good scrub, this matchup is positive for Susan. I, I would say <laughs> it's not like... Not as violently as that, let, but yeah. let, let me put it at like 5.24.8 in Susano favor. That's kind of how specific... So basically we're even. It's basically even, but I think... Th there is... Look, 6A is fucked against a few characters, and 9 is one of the few characters that actually gets hit by 6A as intended. <laughs> right? Because nice. Because like you've got characters like... Ragnar, and Ragnar's just like, man, why the fuck does this giant dinosaur have a Glock? <laughs> right? Like, he does not need that. He does not need that in this matchup. But then you've got the Glock against, like, is an army, and it's like, this doesn't do anything. I understand what you tried to give me here, but it does nothing. What's the point? But, like, Kokonoe, Nine, I'd say they're the two main characters who actually do get kind of bothered, frustrated. Oh, and Carl. Carl as well. Maybe Relius too, but I don't think as much. But those you characters... You irritated a little bit by No, because you, you just jump in the air, you put Steins out, now <laughs> I have to stop 6A. Hey, let, let, me put, let me put it this way, right? It makes it worse, because on the ground, my Steins come out much faster. So it actually does give Susan more of an opportunity to get in than okay, other characters. Okay, that's have. fair. Because uh, Stein placement in the air is a lot slower. It is slower than the slowest grounded Stein placement. Yeah, so it's... <laughs> I think the matchup is fine. The way I tend to play it is Susano. Make the 9 do the moving. Um, and that's actually good advice for anyone. Make 9 move. If you are a character who has a way to make 9 move, you're probably at least even with 9. I know that hurts to hear. That hurts to hear. But if you are a character who can make 9 move, you're probably at least even. What a way... We did can... mention it. What? Sorry. Uh, we got... He didn't mention CT on the mirror. Three out of ten seminar. We did. did. We did mention it. <laughs> um, I <laughs> fake some, news. Some examples of ways to make nine move. Uh, be a better zoner than her. Um, another way to do it is uh, be a character. 
Uh, if, if, have for, more health than her. Uh, if you're winning. Well, not, yeah, that's part of it. But the other one is just play any character that Aether seems to play. Because those are all resource characters who benefit from being far away. <laughs> um, Subaki can charge stuff at full screen being frustrating. Izayoi, spam at a distance. Nine doesn't really... like. Nine can build spells, but Nine's still eventually forced to go in when she's got all the spells she could ever want, right? Um, Hakuman, stand there! Platinum, farm items, right? If your character has something like that, uh, Gravitons from Coco as well, for example. Um, just be annoying. Just do something that makes her think, ugh, I need to go in, right? Um, and Susano does that with 6A and or 4D. Um, I think if you can make her move, make her realize that there is a reason she needs to get in and get in fast, uh, she is playing the approach game when her forward movement is, like, some of the worst in the game. <laughs> He's got arthritis trying to reach you. Yeah. How old he is. Um, Alright, so related to the Susan question, we would got slightly sidetracked answer into yeah. general slow character matchups versus her. Um, what the fuck does Susan do about 6C? <laughs> uh, play do patient. you recognize this person? Uxie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so, alright, yeah, it's a fair question. So, uh, Susano, like Tega, is a very tall fella and gets hit by almost max range 6C, right? Like, it, it, that is effectively max range 6C. <laughs> Look at that <laughs> shit. <laughs> um, from this range, guess what? 3C does not technically reach perfect max range. But if you are anywhere other than perfect max range... Yeah, just 3C, lol. <laughs> uh, 2D also works. 2D is risky, of course. Um, you've got two... I mean, you're taking risks two, in general. Two, yeah. two, 2B also works a little bit. Um, the easy way to do it, if 9 whiffs... Just jump in. On reaction. <laughs> you don't have to guess. Like, let me let me be clear. Nine doesn't have a little light above your head that tells you when you that tells her when you as your the the nine's opponent is going to commit. She doesn't get to know when you're going to commit. You can just stand right out of outside of her range and constantly threat to commit, and she's going to be like, ah, when do I six C? When do I six C? And if she doesn't guess right, like, you're in. So, okay, so back to what we were saying make, earlier, play make, passive wall. Make her blink. <laughs> okay, uh, so we've got... Uh, is there a section on easy things to punish with resource? Uh, there's two more questions after this. Wait, easy that's... things to punish, like, if... What do like, you spend, if, you, if you can spend 50 meter, what are some good things to punish or look for? Uh, Navy pressure is the big one. Okay. Um, if you have a way... If you block this here... Wait, was that was not safe? Hold on. <laughs> uh, it's minus three on block. You need to instant block it to, for it to be possible. Oh, so Susano will not be blocking. I mean, punishing rather. This is really hard to block like this. <laughs> wow, that's fascinating, right? Well, you take your turn at least. I always thought it was more minus than that. Fucked up. This character's broken, guys. <laughs> um, stuff to punish. That's a really good point. Um, she doesn't have stuff that's obviously punishable, right? It's like, OD through this is like all I can really imagine. I um, feel like I should talk about um, ODR spots. Unfortunately, no, I, I would love to use the on ODR column on Dust Loop to talk about this, but unfortunately, no one's filled it out. Uh, so it's a bit hard to talk about. Well, actually, wait a minute. They've a oh, they've added a total frames. I could quickly do frame data for this. <laughs> uh, that's... Um, I'm gonna give you oh, the short version what? of beating. So nine. every five X button is ODR unsafe. Yes. So the only ODR safe stuff she has is this. Her four X's, and even those are fucking borderline, especially four C. Um. Everything else is ODR unsafe. Except for Kunzai. Well, okay, Kunzai can be OD unsafe, but it's not often. Uh, it is my, it is 40 frames total. So if you 
do Kunzite and they overdrive on the first possible frame, I believe you'll be minus 14. Yes. So, uh, what, yeah, yeah. So that means EA will punish there, but you will get meated. So you need to P or use EA. Exactly, yeah. But um, also, if you delay overdrive, well, then it depends on how much you delayed. But if you're reacting to it, you've probably done it too late. Unless you get raw overdrive, in which case you might have enough time to punish, because uh, raw overdrive is much more. Uh, generally not. I don't believe raw overdrive ever gives you the time to do that. Let's let's look at it. So uh, your. To be fair, if you did it. Uh, um. Twenty one. What's the uh, word? Um, if you did it, like, before the Kunzai was properly out, then you get raw OD, but... Actually, there's like a, it's like five frames, you need like a five frame jab to punish. It's like minus five for nine on, uh, OD, on OD OS, if you do it perfectly. Yeah. So you won't get a punish with OD OS, but you will get your turn. Um, oh, I should also talk about her pressure structure, she can reverse beat, um... 5A, five, I mean, five 5C, five 4X is a real thing she can do. So I can do, like... I mean, it's just uni pressure, right? Like, if you've played, if you've played you know, any of the Unis series, then uh, you're probably r vaguely familiar with the idea behind, like, whiffing a negative button and doing spacing traps. There you go. That's just a few examples there. That's, like, the most common one she does. Um, I guess I should also talk about the thing that was alluded to earlier, um... Uh... Left-right fairy. Oh, right, yeah, that was one of the set uh, setups we were going to talk about. Left-right uh, fairy in the corner. Yeah, it's just, like, she teleports behind you and then back in front, and... Uh, well, hopefully if your DP is crossed up, you have a Wait, useful no. move. <laughs> Isn't... Uh, oh, sorry, maybe I'm thinking of a different setup. I'm thinking of the one where you... Isn't there a freeze restand version of this or something? I swear you've used something like that on me. Where you uh... Uh, teleport forward in the air above me, and fairy is what crosses you up. Oh! That? Yeah. There's that? Uh, well, it's harder to do that in the air. Well, you could do... Hold on. Okay, I, I, I think I know what you're talking about. I swear you've done it off, like, set play or something. That maybe? Hold on, stop rolling, Susano. Right, yeah. It's probably that. You, you generally don't end up rolling because you're afraid of the safe jump catch. Yeah. So you end up getting caught by the, the cross-up. So I guess the answer here is just to roll. But you need to realize that... You need to take a gamble that they're going to try to Yeah. Okay, that's a bit awkward, but all right, cool. Um... Um, we've got two more questions if we want to cover those. Yeah. Um, so, another one from Dinko. 9 vs 9 how, which I'm assuming is like, what do you do in the mirror? Uh, so, have you guys ever played Mario Party? <laughs> okay, so it's just absolute clown show. Uh, so Kunzite is unusable. <laughs> um, so, uh, we didn't cover the frame data, but her teleport dash is actually frame 1 projectile involved, so I assume they just like... If they think Kunzai is coming, they just teleport out? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. That, that there are avenues cool. that Nine goes into where, like, if you just teleport out as a defending Nine, there is nothing they can do. <laughs> um, so her pressure is very bad against herself, and her neutral is very bad against herself. Everything oh, she has is bad you, you against need herself. To, you need to play neutral, but both players neutral is bad. Yes. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, so the, 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 the fabled 3-3 three, three matchup. The matchup literally comes down to teleports. It's entirely who decides to teleport when. Um, the gist of it is whoever teleports first is at a disadvantage. But if the person who teleports second buffers a second teleport when the person who teleports first only does one, then the person who teleported second will lose even though... Uh, it's so bad, bros. <laughs> It's so it's so teleport bad. RPS. Yes. It's teleport <laughs> RPS the whole time, except it's not just who does it first, who does it second. It's how many do they do, in what direction do they do it, do they use a direction at all? Because she can do teleport one forwards, teleport two down to stay still. Right? And so it's oh, like, uh, it's actually such a garbage matchup. 
I hate it. I would rather just play Susano into that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we've got one last question. This is one thing you put down. So, uh, I figured I would save this for last since yeah. I figured it would be a large one. Uh, bursting. Do I assume that you're going to cover, like, what are bad spots to burst versus nine? <laughs> uh, so nine auto baits bursts after any of her 6x buttons. Like six that. 6x into, like, uh... Oh, right, because you can do delayed jump button. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is a thing that an other characters have, but they usually have it on, like, a counter hit starter. Okay. Oh, is is uh, that that's the only one. thing you wanted to talk about? Uh, or? Uh, no, so there's that. After Kunzite, Knight can hold back for quite a long time before she has to keep comboing. That's an auto uh, burst bait spot. Um, Crimson Raider Rapid in the air. That is an auto burst bait. As you can see there. I'll give lag a second to catch up, but that's an auto burst bait spot. Um, I can't you hold do like for a that long. Falling uh, ear normal or something afterwards. Yeah. Um, so in, in theory, like you can still burst here, but you need to yes. these beat instant bursts. You need to delay yes. burst and catch the normal. Um, delay burst. Uh, another big one is <sighs> so <clears throat> if you're going to burst, do it before freeze. Um. Actually, okay, we need to talk about... Okay, if you're going to burst, use it after she's deployed a spell. <laughs> um, so do not burst the hit before Kunzite. Burst the Kunzite, okay? <laughs> because if you burst her you're, before the Kunzite, she now has Kunzite on the other side of the screen. That's really handy. That's really handy. But if you burst the Kunzite, she does not have Kunzite on the other side of the screen now. It's, it's kind of obvious, isn't it? Um, on top of that, freeze. Uh, uh, let me just show you what Nine can do. That. Except she doesn't drop, because that's hard. Um, she can freeze overdrive and just dump all of her meter into big damage. So if you're going... The freeze is a one-sided hit stop, I'm assuming. It, you, it, base, it baits bursts. Yeah. Okay, so since it's a projectile, it has one-sided hit stop, uh, so freeze into overdrive is just, you're going to die if you try burst it. Exactly right. Okay. Um, I ah, will... one-sided hit stop is fun. <laughs> yeah, it's something. I will say, like, I have not covered everything. I, I, I think it will be hard to, considering yeah. we've only been here two, nearly three hours. Yeah, I relatively can't... short for covering everything a character could possibly do. Yeah, so th <laughs> there's so much that hasn't been covered, but I can't think of a lot of it because it's like this stuff doesn't come up very much, or I don't realize it's a question. Um, so if mm. you have questions, please direct them to me uh, either in the next few moments or another day because we're probably close to finishing up here. We'll we'll stick around for like I don't know five minutes. Oh well, yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, I'm not saying boom. Uh, no, Dingo, we cannot. I I owe some people some games. In a different game. I have a quota to meet. <laughs> but yeah, we'll wait around for like five minutes if anyone has any questions. Relating to nine, not a get about playing versus Hutch, I'm guessing. Yeah. Guaranteed burst points, since we covered like. Uh, uh, so as long as there's the 50 burst. meter, there's no such thing. Um, but otherwise, just when she's doing an airstream. Well, that's the true of every character. Yeah. Um, guaranteed burst points will. Uh, Crimson Raider, uh, any of her normals that aren't 6x or 5x, uh, because she can do this. I mean, isn't 4x, like, you can jump cancel, right? 4x cannot jump cancel. Am I... really? No, oh, I really? thought they could. Nah. Okay. Nah, this character sucks, bro. <laughs> Honestly deserved, considering it was a fucking disjoint. Yeah, so. they, they, they are already good as is. Thanks for taking three hours out for this two-hour guide. <laughs> Shut up. Alright, so covered uh, that or uh, any other guaranteed burst spots you want to mention? Uh, uh, air series before freeze. Um, so once I've done 6x, everything in the air is essentially a guaranteed burst point. Unless I choose to double jump for some weird reason which is well let's put it this way if 
it's not a guaranteed burst point actually, because I could or double jump. Double block. jump and block. But if I do that, the combo is gone. You're playing and, and and I am in the air, so I will have to use like I'm already in the air, so I'll have to use a teleport to land or just block, right? It so it's it's an RPS that is not favored for nine, um, unless the health is really low for the defender. Um, do we have any other questions? It would seem not. I'm just kind of, if people are wondering what I'm doing here in the back, I'm just kind of like trying to show stuff that you might actually see a 9 do. That is not actually necessary for knowing setups or anything, it's just... What's a good visual to recognize the spacing to stand to check step 1, chase step 2? Like outside of 5C range. Oh. So th this is asking about the um, 5A range. To jab it. This range, this range here. You, you kind of want to be... If she teleports at you yeah. from, like, just outside of her 5A range. Round start is a good indicator of it. Like, around that range. Yeah. Maybe a touch further back, yeah. So, okay, you know what? Actually, maybe 5... Hold on. I'd say it... No, I'd say it around 5A. You want you want to be at around the 5A range. Uh, it, at least from my testing of doing it, I think 5A is the correct spacing. Yeah, i Because you want I'd to be close to... Um... So this depends on your character, obviously, but uh, for Mew, you can option select against all the options by doing 5A with 5C. Um, that will catch jump to A after up teleport. It's a bit weird, but it does work. Um, but you want to be close enough that 5C will catch back teleport. And yeah, so obviously it depends on character. If you've got more or less range, It'll probably vary, but uh, I think a good spacing is around nine's five A range. Yeah, it would depend on character. I agree, Dingo. Anything else? Uh, I can't think of anything immediately. I've like a anything that I would have left to share. I probably don't realize it is worth sharing. If that Uncommon makes sense. Solution, but after blocking Seed Oki plus God Hand Jump X, is 9 still at advantage? Uh, but after blocking Seed Oki plus God... Wait, Seed Oki? Hold on, wait. So... I assume he means Seed plus God Hand. Uh, if you ma somehow manage to block this, is 9 still plus? Do you mean like this? Uh, well, okay, let me get the bot to block everything. Yeah, if you if you block the hard to blockable, I, are you still plus? Um, go into improvement mode actually, before you do this. Uh, hold on. Uh, no, I, I can demonstrate this really easy actually. There's, there's a frame advantage thing for improvement mode. So the last thing to hit is the last seed hit there. So I can 2A or 4X. Uh, and the last seed hit, fun fact, pushes you towards me. <laughs> so I'm going to be in range for a 4X. Uh, so if the hard to blockable is blocked, then nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, you will be pushed towards me out of the corner uh, where I can press a button. Um, now, the hard to blockable comes in a few different shapes and sizes, and sometimes the fire rain hit will be last, not the seed. If that is the case, then you can take a turn, but you need to be able to recognize that spacing and that timing, and I'm gonna tell you right now, even I don't know what that looks like, I just react to the situation occurring. I realize ahead of time that, oh, that was a bit late, I think, but I don't even know how that happens, I don't know where it happens, I just know that it can sometimes happen based on when I try to go for it. This character is really inconsistent sometimes. Oh, uh, this isn't a question, but I want to read it off anyway. Yeah. I can't believe my character is carried towards you by seed, Oki. <laughs> Can't believe towards you is in lowercase by C Doki. Um, here's a fun one for Tega players. Tega is the only character in the game where rising JA hits. Uh, standing, <laughs> granted, but it's not uncommon for me to uh, do some like weird stuff and then spark ball Oki. I don't know. Uh, okay, do we have any other questions? What, what is this shit? What is this? 
Hold on. Also, uh, since we don't have a question, I figured uh, I'd talk about this. Kind of annoying that you have to stand in the range where you she can start gaining spells, but what can you do? Um, that's sort of why you want the mobility. You don't. You really don't want to stand in that sort of range, especially as a low mobility character, because then she starts bullying you with 5B and getting spells. Um, so, ideally, you only want to move into that position when you think she's about to teleport. But... Obviously, if you're playing Tega, you're playing Azrael, that's not really something. You don't have the mobility to do that. Um, so we have another question. Mm -hmm. uh, if you OD the Rising Jump 8 in Fairy Oki, can you EA challenge or get out? Uh, as in Rising J2A, I think. Yeah, Yeah, the, the instant overhead. If you, man if you overdrive through that, OD or overdrive, I'm not sure which would be, probably ODR, uh, do you get to punish? I think you need. I think you would need to record nine doing this. Yeah, you're right. Um, so you need to swap the characters around. I will use Jim. Jim Kasagi. I just realized I need to set the bot to block everything. I would suggest, like, you do, like, 3C5D, press your start button, and... Hold on, wait, 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 wait. block. Or you can just, I don't know. You need, you can... That works, I guess. I think that was it recorded, was it? I would guess, yeah. Nope. <laughs> oh, oh, you, you didn't turn on record. Hutch? Press in, go into the menus. Hold on, no, no, I got this. I, I got this. I got there's this. There's a user interface element for whether you're recording or not. I got this. I got this. J please just turn on the I got thing this. that tells you whether it's, you're recording or not. I, oh, I didn't do the fairy okay. Fuck. I just did the combo. <laughs> Alright, there we go. So. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> okay, hold on. I got this. This isn't scuffed. <laughs> yeah, looks like it. Hold on, let me... It looks like that'll work. Since she'll be in recovery to landing from um, the Rising Jump 2A, yeah. you would definitely be able to get a punish there. So you get to just kill her. If you if you overdrive through that, you get to say, for example, with Jin, you get to turn around, walk under her, five C super R C and kill her. Fuck. You get to do much cooler combos than the one Hutch just did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Do we have any other questions? We're actually getting quite a few. Fenrich on vacation today. He's not in. He escaped Hutch's. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm not. I'm never letting him escape. <laughs> and where? Where is he? <laughs> uh, he's eating. I, 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 I decided to throw down some morsels. Fuck. Um. Well, if we don't have any more questions, I'll give this like uh, we'll give this like two minutes and see if there's any more. And if not, we'll just end. Wait, ha! <laughs> it's a fucking volume icon. Jin's <laughs> 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 turning up the sound on the telly. <laughs> wow, it's too loud. <laughs> hey, uh, if you want to see funny hitboxes, uh, go look at Ragnar. Go to, go to Ragnar and just let uh, the idle animation play. Yes, I have noticed. <laughs> Maybe not in the corner. Uh. <laughs> no, you know what the real problem one is? It's Jin. This character is fucked. See, <laughs> see that waving? That affects 9's 5A around start. Oh yeah, it's inc it affects... This actually affects... Muse Tachi in the corner. 
Like, sometimes Tachi will just whiff on standing Jin. I'm mashing 5A and nothing else. <laughs> and eventually this hits. <laughs> sometimes it works first try, sometimes you got stuff like this. <laughs> Any moment now. <laughs> Fucked up. Okay. It's been almost two minutes, so I think we're going to be ending unless uh, we have any other questions. Now is your well, last. You get a big flip. I don't know if Hutch has got it set up. I fucking don't, unfortunately. Okay, well that is that is very sad. Oh my god, he can combo that. Character's broken. Uh, the first hit of the freeze of two one four D is actually really of jump two one four D is actually really long. Um. If you, there, there's like a very specific spacing where you can get the first hit to land, but not the second hit, and you just get to like land and continue the combo. I see. Well, I'm glad we were able to answer some of them. But um, that has been two minutes, now two and a half. Let's, uh, if we've got someone to raid, we'll, I'll set up the raid for that. Otherwise, we'll just head off. And uh, this, the VOD for this should be available on Twitch, uh, f at least until it gets deleted, and we'll get Robo, uh, to Robo, uh, Robo will probably put this on his archive channel as well, there'll be a link to it on the, uh... Um, yeah, actually, ooh, I could ask, ooh, I mean, yeah, I'm sure Robo wouldn't mind having it on their channel, I might see if I can get Robo to put it on my channel as well. Robo, Robo can probably give you the, uh, footage, yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you planning to make an edited version of this? Where we, like, uh, I, I will the... probably not bother trimming this, that... I will just record a separate one. That, that is fair. Something a lot more scripted, like go through the, the quality. Yeah. It does not look like there is anyone, at least on my list, that is playing uh, all that much. So I think we're going to just end. So feel free to end the stream whenever. Uh, okay. You're, all right. you're the streamer today. Holy shit, it's me. I'm the streamer. Why is Nine doing things? <laughs> Why is Nine doing things? This is a... Nine... Because you're pressing buttons? I'm not. I, I, I have my hands off of everything right oh, now. Oh, we have one more, one last question before we end. So do you just use Robo's channel? Yeah. Um, we used to host, like, whoever was the person, like, hosting the, um, uh, the tournament would just stream it on their stream, but we decided, hey, like, it's a bit confusing for everyone to just have to go to a, a new stream every week if, um, you know, like, I'm streaming, we'll go to the Lag Wizards channel, Hutch's stream, we'll go to Hutch's channel, Robo's stream, we'll go to Robo's channel, Moon, like, we have a bunch of different streamers who, um, just to spread the workload of, of organizing and running the tournament, um, and we eventually decided that, hey, it's probably easier to just host it on one channel, and we decided that we'd do it on Robo's, because Robo's is, to be quite honest, the most professional looking of all of us, so... Thanks. That's why. Hey, Nine is tall, by the way. This is my last piece of advice. Nine is tall, so be mean to her about being tall. Paul bullying. <laughs> anyway, if All right, Hutch, you the streamer, dusted. feel free to end whenever. Um, why Hutch cam out at end of stream? Ah, uh, because I just saw it there when I opened OBS, so I thought I'd click on it and see who noticed. Hutch, noticed. Hutch cam visible, been activated. <laughs> GGWP, uh, know you. Anyway, folks, thanks for coming out. There will be a more condensed version of this another time that will feature a slightly more digestible, but this was just... The, the purpose of this was mainly for people who actually want to be here and ask questions, see stuff, understand stuff. So hopefully you got something out of this. Um, the more positively people rate this, the less of an excuse you have to lose now. <laughs> Smiley face. Anyway, uh... Uh... Lag, whatever you say next is the last thing the stream will hear. Goodbye. Oh, that's boring.